now we are out. Yeah. Oh no, you're Cody. you're nice and loud now. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got like you, the way the timing for your show is. Nanu, nanu. I wonder who nanu, nanu is. For me, um, tomorrow afternoon I'm going to be pretty busy, but if. I can make it back to, to join in. I'm pretty sure somewhere in my book collection I've still got one at least one book on the subject of UFOs um, that I got you know, years ago. Uh, one of the things that always interested me when I was reading about it was uh, stuff like cattle mutilation. That was, a, that was one that was always, you know, piqued my interest because it was a kind of weird one. It was a, a very, like, Say, right, you're still reading a story, and you have to, you know, you've no way of specifically saying is that story true. But if you assume the reports are true and the photographs are accurate and all that kind of thing, there's a huge question mark over something like that happening, the way it happened. You know what I mean? It's you know, cauterized flesh getting taken from around the eye and things like that of, of cattle in the middle of nowhere, and there's no tracks of vehicles leading there that kind of thing you know and, and when you go back to when it happened the technology didn't exist to do that you know what i mean so that kind of stuff interests me because you're just a big how the fuck did it happen you know what I mean? oh, definitely I, I i hear you man I, i've been I, I mean i was this was my thing before even flat earth i mean i used to listen a lot of the uh, how the universe works and cosmos and you heard that as a cliche of people like oh i was looking I was a big fan of how the universe works and ancient aliens, but I really was, bro. And I watched hundreds of hours of all these UFOs and stuff. And since I was a little kid, 10, 11, 12 years old, all, oh, my uncle lived in the in the mountains in Puerto Rico. And we always, like, it was so nope, fish flag. Nope, and we just, with good eyes, yeah. little kids looking That's up smart. and like, holy shit, look at that one star. Like, it's moving so awkward and doing this little slow turn. Yeah, and shit. aliens just are more like the things growing in the sky. And so oh, we know. Them, who the fuck knows? I mean, that was 30 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, so. I love it, too. What, what gets me is that maybe somebody can answer this for me because... How many coincidental oh, no. incidences does it take before it becomes evidence? Yeah. You know, I mean, you, it just doesn't make any sense for people to blow this stuff off when we have all these coincidences of things happening, but it's all discounted and it's just garbage because... It, yeah, it's a it's a thin line. It's about trust because who in the fuck to trust that people either witness this or experience this shit or not? It's a tricky one. If it's a from the whatever the air force or the army or the government, so you say like, oh, I don't trust them, so that's why I'm gonna dismiss it. Not necessarily because you got a bunch of people, farmers and shit, like also seeing this stuff and and experience it, and they don't have footage or evidence, but they speak about it, so. Who to trust what is true or not, you know? It's, it's a very tricky situation. Well, I think, well, is, I think another there thing there that... Is there a scientific explanation to where how many coincidences, coincidental incidences are become factual or evidential? Hmm. I mean... Well, studies I think, and, and statistics, yeah, who knows? I think another issue is that, um, it, you know, the, the confliction that between you know, what one person sees and another person sees. So one person will see, you know, three dots in the sky, another person will see a long... Oh, bloody hell. Guys, guys seriously. Fire fight to imagination. Bloody wind up, mate. Jews, Jews see... Well, I hope whatever you just like to think. Jews <laughs> said you said Jews? You guys, no use, use. Guys. Oh, I thought you said Jews. No, no. Yeah. Check, check, mic check. Check, check. We hear check, you. Right. you guys. Do you guys seriously believe in aliens and stuff like that? <sighs> no, oh, not, not little not, aliens. No. You think? No, no, not little green men. Forget that. That was just an exaggeration. No. That was fake, right? I know. But do you guys? Could, could could you possibly think that maybe perhaps yeah. they're actually military? 
No. Yeah. Uh, there are possible. Yes, yes, there are possibilities. Oh, you mean UFOs now? Yes. Yeah, that's so what I'm talking about. Explanations. Ah, no, you yes. said aliens. Yeah, well, well you there are two. Right. Uh, there are two aspects. Right. There are how two aspects this? to it, right? right? How about this? Do you guys think there's a possibility, right, that they've genetically modified uh, perhaps uh, human beings to be able to take the... Uh, no, the that force? seems to go beyond our capability right now. No, it... no, no, you, no, no, no. But you don't think that there's, you don't actually think there's a higher technology than we actually know there is? Do you think the military no. actually tells, or even private corporations, guys? Well, on this earth, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, definitely not. Mm. No. The technology is not, technology's just not on this earth, is not there at the moment. How, how do you whether, know it's on that? The, whether it's in it, how do we know that? Well, how do you yeah, know there is? To military information. Yeah, but how do you know there, there is? is? No, yeah. no, no, no. The technology builds on technology, so basically you can't have a technology that goes far beyond the general technology. See again? You, you, if you're going to make if you're going to make a claim, you need to actually sort of bring evidence to sort of say to back your claim. I mean, you can't okay, just make yeah. a claim and say, well, I don't really know. And how do right, you okay. it doesn't. Right. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Right, okay, right. I'll, I'll bring my, I'll, I'll tell you why I possibly think that, right? Because governments have been known uh, to hide certain types of... Uh, okay, that's not evidence. Excuse me. Uh, it is evidence. That's not evidence. To me, it that's is evidence. That's not evidence. There's a possibility... My, my neighbour has been dude, has been known dude, to, to walk dude, in the middle of the night. Dude, that doesn't mean listen, he listen, murdered look, somebody. Please. I mean, come on. No, he, you he's died, right. that's not you evidence. Died. He's right, it you're isn't saying, evidence. It's not evidence. Shut the fuck up, will you? Your science. Hey, right? fuck you. <laughs> Tell me to fuck up. Your, your science is based on probability. Oh, and confidence. Did you get that? Uh, here's what, here's right. what I understand. I understand that the people suggesting that there is technology that we are unaware of also believe in things like flat earth. No, 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 no. Fuck that. There's loads of people that know about uh, technology. has got nothing to do with flat earth. Flat earth is yeah, not so many different. Way. But Nano, what 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 I don't know if it got heard because we were all yelling at each other, but technology seems to build on technology. So there's only a certain amount of technological advancement you can have in a subgroup of this of this planet. So you don't basically have somebody who's a hundred years ahead of another group. Um, here's, here's, the so, thing, here's the thing I wanted to say to you, Nano. You, 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 no, if you're gonna, if you, call me Ali. I'm Ali. Ali. Okay, you okay. Do. Ali, is it Ali? Did you say? <laughs> Ali, did you say? Excuse, Ali. excuse me, just one second, guys. Globy, I've sent you a message. Could you just check it, please? Thank you. Did you did you say name, your name is Ali? Did you say? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, Ali. Well, <laughs> right. The thing is, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a claim of something, you can't just say, well. How do you know? Well, the thing is that you're making a claim. Do you understand what I mean? So the burden of proof really is on yourself. Yeah, you but, I'm, just I'm to, but to, hang, hold, hold on. Let, 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 me, let me finish what I'm saying. But then to say exactly what somebody else to say, but then to say that, oh, well, the, well governments hide things all the time is, doesn't prove anything, doesn't prove that they're actually hiding you know, what you're suggesting they're hiding. Just you know what I mean, you need to you need to sort of say, well, okay, um, I think this because of this evidence, not because oh, governments lie to us. Yeah, I agree with you. Governments lie to all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're just about to uh, kill me, does yeah, it? I can't prove that they're going to kill me. You're not coming you, through, George. You're you, like you've you. went you you've went from one extreme to that. I never even mentioned anything about killing us. No, no, no. I'm using that as an example, um, Ali. No, well, you I mean that's a bit over the score, right? I never said no, that. No, no, I, I never said right. you said that. I'm just all right, using let me explain an example. All right, let me explain um my where I draw my conclusions from, right? That the RC would be evidence, evidence to suggest, right? Evidence to suggest. So I can quite I can accept that there's a uh, there's a uh, certain people right that have that have a uh, uh, more money uh, than countries right and they can basically they can basically do what they want right they can they can uh, 
They can develop technology without anybody knowing. The military have done it before, right? There's, there's, a, there's a plethora of evidence to suggest, perhaps, rather than believe in hairy, fairy aliens, that they've actually got technology. That we know the military is always ahead in technology. We can, we can accept that, right? Take away the fact that you, you, you're actually more willing to believe in aliens that have built the, these crafts than actual than, than the uh, uh, governments that? that have been known. Uh, the governments no, that have been known. But you're putting you're putting words in my no mouth one now. Said yeah. that. I know we said that. I'd never said that at all. No. I'd never at any point said that. But you, said just, what? you just said that, that I, what, I'm more like to what believe that aliens have built these technology. When did I say what, that? What, what, what did you what, what did you say I said? You, 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 you just suggested that you're more inclined to actually believe that aliens built this technology. Nobody said that. No, when we were talking about aliens, we were talking no, about... are talking about aliens. You guys have been talking about aliens, right? Yeah, but nobody... nobody I it, never at any point said believe, that I believe that aliens have built this technology. I've aliens. never said that. I never but said you've, any but Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop okay. distracting from the point. But the point is that you believe in aliens. What? So you're suggesting that aliens... No. And uh, human finish. beings build the technology for them. No, I didn't say that at all. When have I said that? So what are you saying? No. When did Define I say that? aliens, Ali. I think we got. I think we need to understand what the definition of alien is. Right. You, you, what we, you just said, you just said evidence world. to suggest, but again, what you've just said there is still is not evidence. It's just your guess. It's just basically you coming up with oh, a hypothesis, it's based, not even the theory. On, uh, wait a minute. It's, it's based on a body of evidence. There's plenty of evidence. No, no. What, what evidence is there that there's there's technology? No, that no, can do no, what no, you're no, suggesting? no. I, 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 I said the government has been known to hide things, right? And yeah, but how is that evidence? That well, just that well, makes no sense. Finish. Can I finish well, there's it? a reason why they hide well, their the technology is because they don't okay. want enemies. That's why, guys, take... guys, that yeah. is why you guys are going to end up talking amongst your fucking selves and arguing amongst yourselves because people like myself, flat earthers or whatever, will just stop fucking interacting with you guys because this is... Oh, this dear. Is oh, well, it's no loss to us. How sad. Tell, I'll tell you what, I'll tell, tell you what. Let, Never let, mind. Let, let, guys, that's guys, just let, let him finish what he wants to say right away. That's, 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 that's fine. Him. It's just, hey, listen, guys, listen, if you want to come on the internet and call people retards, right, that opportunity is going to get quickly taken away from no, you. But but excuse you said you're me, that's what you've done. If you continue yeah. to be... I will use that's what you've done. Excuse yeah. me, Ali B. You, you you've come on the internet and you've you called millions of people liars, fools, thieves, you, you crooks, guys are retarded deceivers. You are the ones like, doing that. You are, are the one, Ali B. I tell you Don't what. Come on here you. saying that we After are calling Hickory. people retards. Hickory, I tell you what. Let's tell you what, guys. Let's just Dang let's it. just say silent. Let's just see what Nanu's got to say. You say the whole, what you want to say <laughs> right away from start to finish, and then we'll see what you what how we go with that because you you're accusing of this disruption. So go ahead, go. But you've plainly been disrupting me. So my accusation stands true, right? Right, get on with it. Go on, go. So do you admit, don't tell me to get on with it. Do you admit you were interrupting me? Oh, oh get on with get it. Get on with it, Christ. Christ. See, now I'm playing with you guys. You talk Fuck forever off. and then you bitch. Get on right. with it. If you want to say your piece, say your piece and get on with it. Talk about it. Go. I, I, I have no piece. I have no piece to say. Right. Well, so let's you, stop talking. You, oh, for fuck's sake! He's just here to interrupt. He said he he said he. Okay. In, in the final thoughts, Ali B said, "I enjoy the drama. That's all he's here for is to yeah. is to cause exactly. confusion. Anytime there's a conversation with Ali B in it, everyone is completely confused about who is talking about what." Yeah, and I, I maintain it's what just I said to you about before Ali B. I think you're just a troll, personally. I think you really are. That's what I'm you confused. Well, yeah. hey, uh, well, wait a minute. Now that I'd, I have, I have started trolling, but I do believe the Earth is flat. Oh so well, can, we don't care, care to be honest. So you, have, so you have come here yeah. to troll then. So and you uh, guys, you guys are deluded. You guys. Alien. Well, what are you guys doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? We're talking nicely no, until are you, you arrived. No, told you. What, what are you doing you. here? You, you, what are you doing you here? Doing. I just you answered the you. question. What are you doing oh, here? You come to troll. troll. I'm here troll. trolling. You. Troll. I saw you doing this. No, you just admitted you're you trolling. I gave you a platform just a moment ago to speak, but all you wanted to do is just bolster and baffle about Can you... not being interrupted. You had the chance. You missed it. Yeah, but what do you guys believe in? What are you guys here? Why are you? See, okay, okay. Let me let me let me take that. Let me take that for a second. Yeah. Ali B. Let me take that for a second. Dump this. Stop troll. talking for a second and we can answer. Let me let me take that one. 
Okay, there are people online who believe the earth is flat. All right, a number of people have come online to answer that, uh, that claim. All right, and in doing so, they have found a community of like-minded people that they enjoy interacting with. That's what this is. Okay, that's all this is. We, there isn't any conspiracy. The earth is not flat, and we're 100% confident in that. But all that's happened is that, is that thanks to flat earth, we now have a group of different people uh, that are like-minded that can sit in a chat room and chat about something interesting, laugh, exchange jokes, be very, very silly, give each other stupid names, et cetera, et cetera. That's all this is. All right. So, Ali, if you want to be in here and you want to chat, that's great. You're welcome. But please, the confusion and the contention is just unbearable. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to chat with people. Hey, Thanks. listen, it's, it's not Matt. No, it's not. You're not here at all to do that. You're here to ridicule people. No, we're not. No, when we're have we ridiculed you? Oh, right? shut up. That's all you guys do. All you yeah. uh, do is he talk he's back. A oh, he's this is all he's here for. He's a troll. He's a troll. Get him out. Troll. Get him out. Get out. Get get out. out. Get get out. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. He's gone. Bye, Alan. Thank God for that. Jesus Christ. That was pain. All I want to do is chat with people and... <laughs> yeah, but but even even redneck Hickory Nick gave him a chance. <laughs> told him all we were doing here was going to have a bloody chat, all right. And yep. no one noticed that I was the fucking host. Okay. Um. <sighs> everyone else was giving him an opportunity to say his little bit of piece about what we were talking about, and all he wanted to do was do the drama thing. And yes, he's a little fucking troll. And you should see yourself. Yeah. Some of the shit we talk about later on, ah, when we're offline. Oh, like we're going to end up we talking don't, we about don't... cheese at some stage. Exactly. Yeah. Who cares? We change. We change our names to stupid things. I'm called Hickory Nick for blank sake. We no, no one is taking this seriously. Just... We're just having fun with it. No one believes the yeah, earth is flat. We sit here and call them names when we're offline. We don't. Who cares? Don't even enter the conversation. The exactly, they're misguided. They think the Earth is flat. They're not going to get anywhere. The Euro, the, the the globe light tour is like they, they go to these different countries and they find two flat Earthers there. It's I not going anywhere. Off there. Nick, How bad is my rain speak, sound? They don't speak the language. No, they don't even speak the language. They're talking English to the Slovakians. <laughs> About it's just though. it's Come silly on, you know, it's this silly is all anyway, you guys do this yeah. is all what you guys do when he's doing exactly what he's telling us that we're doing yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways enough of him um we're talking so about back aliens. to fucking aliens back to aliens alien and life forms. all right How many people here alien life forms and like there is it's kind of interesting life. thought like uh, have you ever looked into the or the bi abiogenesis is one of the things they keep on looking at and trying to figure uh, out how that happens. Uh, uh, panspermia. Well, it doesn't matter. You're just uh, delaying the problem. Um, so they, they've they gotten DNA-like structures to form on clays and stuff like that. It needs like a, a matrix to form on. Um, and they keep on trying different methods of getting it to start. But it does seem like, you know, finding out the initial conditions that cause life is where you would have to find out whether there's any likelihood of it happening anywhere or where this really was just lightning in a bottle. Um, that's really not the right phrase, very rare. Um, but the other thing is, is that intelligent life has to be fostered for millions of years to get smart. And it's not, a, it's not an evolutionary for, foregone conclusion that intelligence comes out of life. So the likelihood of life, intelligent life goes down dramatically. If they guys survive for millions of years and become multicellular, become smart, increase that smartness, come with written language, and then they can start expanding. Yep, don't destroy each other with thermonuclear war. Yep, get smart enough not to kill each other and not to kill each other in the meat. Process. So would you, so to conclude what you're saying, are you saying that you find it unlikely that we're at least within the observable universe or the known universe, 
that there's going to be either there's not going to be intelligent or semi-intelligent life as I might, as I might call it. Is that what you mean? No, just 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 the likelihood <laughs> is you know it goes drops dramatically. I mean, I guess yeah, I'd say unlikely maybe, um, but I the likelihood really depends on how many uh, test beds you have. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, let's let's. I mean, you know, okay, I I can only sort of look at this statistically, okay. Um, without looking up, there's several billion stars or no, at least known stars within our own galaxy, right? Okay. Right. Our galaxy, compared to some galaxies, is actually pretty small. Okay, so there's, there's, there's lots of galaxies out there in the known universe literally have trillions and trillions of star systems, okay? And then you've got, right. and hang hold on, then you've got bi uh, hundreds of billions of known, and I say no, I'll use the word known, galaxies in the known universe okay so statistically speaking there's got to be at least um well i can't give you a sort of figure on it so i had to run upstairs just a moment ago lost my breath <laughs> so um there's statistically speaking they've got to be at least several million possibilities of star systems that that or planets that are in the, within this Goldilocks zone, as we call it, at least within sort of known conditions that can support life. For me, I statistically, only statistically speaking, I would, I cannot, there's no way I could possibly say within the known universe, there is not intelligent or semi-intelligent life. I think to say that it's very unlikely, I think is, I don't think is correct, to be honest with you. I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it, it bring, brings those odds down far enough to sort of say, nah, I don't think it does. You know, and, and I mean, when you look at the vastness, no. the vastness of, of, of just, just the known universe, let alone what we can't see, is just, you know, it's phenomenal. We don't know where the universe ends or even if there is an end to the universe or where there's multi-universes and things like that, you know. So, no, I, I, no, I think it's highly likely that somewhere out there, there is intelligent life. Yeah, it, it, it definitely, uh, I just have a hard time determining the likelihood. Because again, in we on Earth, uh, now I don't know the, how many times did I, abiogenesis happen. Don't know, but we do know that only, we all seem to track back to one type of life form. So whether there was many lines that began and ours is the one that won the battle, um, our eukaryotes are the ones that won the battle um, is hard to determine but it does seem like we all came from pretty much one genetic line and uh, that's kind of telling you know that we don't have you know all these different abiogenesis events it could be even rarer than we think you know, you've, you've got to have such conditions um, yeah, you know, that are so precise, so uh, yeah, it might be a lot less frequent. And then you got to keep a meteorite from hitting the Earth. Well, well, well Ken, Ken within within the last decade, decade or so, we have found um, hundreds of uh, possible exoplanets. Hundreds. Yes. We don't know whether there's life or no. We won't, probably never will, at least for the foreseeable future, until we can actually have the capability to travel to those star systems and have a look at them. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. There's a possibility that it could be at least intelligent or semi-intelligent life even. And that's just within our own galaxy. You know, I, I, I probably right. statistically, probably there isn't intelligent or semi-intelligent life within our own galaxy, but we can't dismiss it. You know, and then yeah. I, I, can't, I can't wait for, the, um, for James Webb to come online so we can actually start discovering more exoplanets, exactly what they consist apparently, of. You know. Yeah, apparently it's, uh, it's been assembled. It's fully assembled now. Uh, well, the two parts that they had is not is yeah, it's, it's assembled with the two parts, but it's not been. There's a lot more that still needs to be done to actually. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah they're going to do the testing issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the first, yeah, for the first time, the two parts, the bottom part where the actual scope is, and the and the underneath part, as they as I call it, I don't know what you call yeah, it, yeah. Uh, is being put together. But yeah, they still got a lot of stuff to actually put in and, and test it all together, and it's 2021. Oh, when cool. It's launching, so. Cool. Still, One of the best telltales we're going to get of extraterrestrial life, though, if we go and look at other planets, is oxygen in the uh, yeah in the atmosphere of these planets. If you, if you see oxygen, that is a hell of a telltale for uh, life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oxygen, hydrogen. Or if you get all those elements together, then yeah, it's, it, it well, uh, rises oxygen doesn't isn't stable. Oxygen tends to no. uh, destroy itself. Not well. Yeah. Com combined with things. 
Yeah. And yeah. so if yeah, you of course oxygen, you can. oxygen in an atmosphere, that's a planet that has, you know, 80% chance of life or 99% chance of life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, what, people, sorry, people get make confused um, about aliens. They assume it's going to be little green men or human beings. Yeah, well, yeah, we yeah, don't know what they're going to be like. just be little microbes. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. That's all we yeah, need. I mean, you know, they, they, you know <laughs> I, I, I said the word semi-intelligent, and when I say semi-intelligent, I'm talking about yeah. what we perceive as, as um, like animals. It could be small rodents, you know, it could be that kind yeah. of type of could type of species, slug. but not necessarily what, what we know them as. It could look something completely different that we've never even seen before. Right. We just don't know. Microbes in little microbe Microsc- spaceships. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little like tiny to... green men. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> uh, like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where they arrive on Earth and then they're swallowed by a small dog. Yeah. <laughs> I have an entire fleet. <laughs> yeah. I heard if you put a paper bag over your head, that'd help. Shall I do that? Yeah. You can't, like, ain't gonna make me we'll help. Don't <laughs> no. forget your towel. <laughs> I've got a towel. I, I'm sorry. I, I want some peanuts. I wanted to say a whole load more, a whole load of stuff because I've I've actually got to go in a sec. So um, that's why oh, I, sorry. Wanted, I wanted to. Oh, no, no, sorry, no. I've, I've probably, got to go. I've, I've, no, I have. I've got St John's tonight, so I've got to leave in about fifteen minutes. Bloody politicians! I don't know. I'm not a politician anymore. I never was a politician. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they say. <laughs> Once a politician, I was never elected. I was never elected. Doesn't matter. No. Okay. It doesn't make me a politician then. Mr. Space yes, Man, the casual space man. <laughs> Mr. Oh, I'm out, space I'm out man. all that stuff. Yes. Where's your car gone? How? Yeah. Oh. How do you hear your guitar in the out, in, with no I atmosphere? Ca- I couldn't. Yeah. I can't. I can't play. The, I can't play the same my life in in an atmosphere, let alone outside of one. Actually, no. You, you could hear the guitar if you held it close to you, close to your spacesuit. You could hear it through the spacesuit. Yeah, it vibrate through the spacesuit. That's right. Oh, it's, <gasps> Jose. it's an alien. Jose is here. Check one two. Is it Jose or is it an alien? <laughs> Gosh, just me. give us a warning before you do that, man. You know what? I felt compelled to come in because I'm going to play Devil's Advocate here, if oh, you guys man. don't mind. Okay, so it's, uh, it's Fish. Oh, oh fish here guy. we go. No, it's yeah. Jose. It's Jose. Uh, but, it is Jose. He's got the same shirt. Oh, but I'm going, to play, I'm going to play Fish Guy in this one. Uh, oh, yeah. Be uh, afraid. Be very afraid. Okay, there I go. We have discovered hundreds of exoplanets in the past years we have known this we have been there you mean they and you no. run with no we as humans no we as humans yeah not not just nasa okay. um yeah we it's the same way race. as when is when you you refer to your sports team you refer to your local sports team as we we run the cup we won yeah, the I, I can understand that yeah i'll give you that one Go but then when team. so when we discover these hundreds of exoplanets what do they actually discover uh being uh, back they receive back a uh, uh, data of a few pixels and they say there is something out here let me send uh, this data to the artists mm, not, and not then quite. they wrap it around make an illustration i have seen documentaries how they do yeah, this it's... representation of these exoplanets so with with them um, with 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 scans and well they're, they're using all sorts of they scan all kinds of different spectrums um and what they can actually do depending on the results of those scans um so for instance um light will reflect reflect certain elements of light back depending on the gas that's in the planet okay if you, that makes sense um, and all kinds of other things as well so they can actually make a determination what the planet may actually consist of it's not always 100 accurate but it's fairly accurate and not only that they can actually tell that they first of all they go by the star that it's that it might be orbiting okay and the heat that actually comes off that so whether it sits within a zone far enough away or close enough to the to the star or the sun um that it's orbiting that it could be either hot enough or cold enough to actually to, to harbor life so they take all those into consideration and they say, well, yeah, then, it, then it's possible. Don't you find, find yourself compelled sometimes to fight your own demons and say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the total opposite of what I am taught and I'm going to look it up from the totally different opposite side of things. How do I know this? Do I just believe it and take a leap of faith and run with it? Because it is really out there to believe 
these are all exoplanets that they but, are catching. What else, they, they, what the I, way what, they interpret the data. Yeah. And by they, I mean we. So I, I, yeah, would, I, I, I would, I would, yeah, I, I get that completely. I would get that 100%. Um, but, but what I would say that would, I, I'll come back to you with a question. What else do we have to go? I on? have varying levels of belief. Basically, I have a level of belief the Earth is round. That's I'm highly confident of that. Um, when it comes to them talking about light, uh, uh, the you know the uh, mechanics of light, I start to get a little bit more fuzzy or a little more fuzzy. When they start talking about planets, yeah, it seems feasible. The technology seems to be there. I'm reasonably confident, but you know, is it the size they said? I don't know. They, they could. There's a lot of errors that can appear. So I just have varying levels. Or the of composition, belief. yeah. Or the composition. Yeah. Say. I understand yeah. how they do the composition. Are they able to accurately do that over that distance? Yeah, maybe, maybe some uh, a particle of dust got in the way and fucked their measurement up. Well, within a certain <laughs> yep. degree, you know, it's not one hundred percent accurate. They wouldn't necessarily get it completely right, but within a certain parameters, they can say, well, okay, well, it falls, it falls within that range. It's not, yeah. you know, without yeah. physically uh, going there and measuring what the what the atmosphere consists of. You know, that's going to be yeah, the they can tell by the colors as well because certain elements will yeah. burn something that will give off this certain light so yeah. they can they know what what elements are actually there just by the colors as the well so, so, it, it, yeah, we, we are so basic, we are so yeah. far away from being able to visit any of those uh, planetary bodies whatever they are oh god yeah. by the time Proxima by Centaur. the time we actually get around to doing that if we yeah. ever do uh, yeah we'll, we'll know we'll have a much better idea by then yeah, you've got to be uh you, you've got to be um just sort of honest about uh how accurate uh, our determinations of uh like say exoplanet atmospheres and stuff are because it's 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 not uh it's not e an easy uh measurement to make at all and there's a there's a lot of margin for error um yeah absolutely you, you really, yeah, yeah. You really, yeah. Um, have you really seen have you really seen a documentary or two like little clips of how they got some artist are artists renderers of these exoplanets to present to the public to make them look visible and pretty you yeah. know i mean you have seen those right please tell me you have yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah. Those, those, those series of dots and data and ones yeah, and zeros course. and they put it together okay yeah. well, there's no yeah. there's no question I mean, that's just, that's just an educated guess it's it's just to, yeah. to you know hypothesize what what might it look like when it is it's really but well, I, think, I mean i it, think it's... that's where i think uh, really quick i think that's where they and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but the deception come in because people, gullible people, they look at this and they say like, how in the fuck they know this is the way they look. And they, they misrepresent the, whatever they've been presented as, they, they <laughs> misunderstand the, what they are trying to imply and present to the public. So they got data, yeah, and they think it could look like this. So, I mean, you, I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it, but you understand what I mean. That no, people is going to see is going to see what they are presented a beautiful ball yeah. with gases and colors, it's... and they say, "But they got this of these ones and zeros." You know. <laughs> somebody, somebody, <laughs> excuse me. Somebody mentioned the word "educated guess." Um, I would say it's a highly educated guess. Okay, because what they're doing is they're taking known parameters, known things that we know. Okay, taking things that we actually know. Uh, and making the the best possible guess from the from what they can actually see, observe, and the data they've actually got. Um, I don't think even NASA would actually claim that the even the the um, the, the, the images that have come up with the composition and the images they come up with from these scans is going to be one entirely accurate. I don't think anybody would say, yeah, that's exactly what it's going to look like. But no, it's it's a best guess. It's a highly educated guess. Um, that's, I mean, that's I, and they always tell me when they're doing it. They never, I mean, that's the beauty. Like, NASA is so good about telling you this is an artist rendition. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't caught more mistakes with that because, you know, it's just, somebody says, oh, here, I'm presenting this. Everybody knows this is an artist rendition. But they go through the effort of, in every drawing, every artist rendition, they say, hey, this is an artist rendition or this was taken by Voyager. Or this yeah. is Voyager overlaid on oh. another Voyager photograph from a year before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we, we, we don't we don't really um, know exactly what the planets outside of our solar system um, really absolutely look like. We don't know whether those artists impression impressions are going to be accurate until we've actually been there. Um, but of course, we know in the solar system because we've had enough probes that pretty, pretty much gone to every planet. We, in fact, or at least passed all the planets and we know what they look are like. Are some of these exoplanets so, from our solar system? 
no, 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 outside of our solar yeah. system. So, 100% of the exoplanets' uh, artistic, artistic renditions that we have seen, visuals, are 100% made up. Yeah. No, no, well, not, not, no, yeah. no, no. I think made up is is is, a, is the wrong thing to say. Personally, um, it's, it's like I said, it's it's it's, it's just the word from, phraseo- it's taken it's from a phraseology, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's taken it's taken from what we actually know from known data and the scans that we've taken, and it's the best. I think, oh, like I said, a highly educated guess. The educated guess. Yeah, yeah that's they've good now enough. got. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the other thing to keep the other thing to keep in mind is that the uh, there. Okay, so, so if it, the planet doesn't turn out to look like that, who cares? <laughs> well, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't it's not. Matter, it's no, not like right. you can. It's not like you can say I'm going to lie about this planet, which is eight trillion miles away, and color it orange instead of green uh, to yeah. fool the masses. I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> that. <laughs> That, that's that's why yes. you, you you never you're never going to get NASA to actually would actually say that any of the exoplanets they actually seen they've done an artist's rendition of it an artist's impression I should say sorry um, and they and they're saying that 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 is an actual accurate portrayal you'd never get anybody from NASA admitting that never they they give they, they data with away. it they say yeah they give they data say with it, yeah. it's got the oxygen it's got nitrogen it's got this but it might also have excessive methane because of spectroscopy yeah right. Exactly. Just to, uh, to give yeah. you an idea of how uh, yeah. how the um, the atmosphere of an exoplanet is actually derived, it, it's um, so I've worked worked alongside some um, research astronomers that uh, are into this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, if you if you look at the spectrum of the uh, the candidate star, and you can identify the elements in that that star from spectroscopy. Yeah. Um, you uh, and there's you're lucky enough to have uh, a situation where an exoplanet is actually transiting in front of that star. Yeah. Then when you when you're measuring the, the this uh, instance of the the planet going in front of it, you've got the combined spectrum of the star and the spectrum of the atmosphere of the planet. Yeah, that's right. To subtract the uh, the uh, the spectrum that, that appears during the transit. So it's. <clears throat> It's yeah, very, point. very difficult to do, and and it's and it's uh, and not many uh, exoplanets are actually in that orientation where they're transiting uh, yeah. their star. Yeah. Um, and it's not actually possible to directly measure the atmosphere of an exoplanet um, no. in any other in any, in any other way. No. Um, but there are lots of. Oh, guys, it's not I, just. I, uh, I, gotta, I gotta get out of here. I just came in to plant the little seed and run. I'll tell you what, while, while Jose's going, I was, I'm going to say goodbye. And then if you're on in a couple of hours, then maybe I'll join again. But uh, unlikely from what cool. Alan's told me in the past. So, But I, I really, I really love this conversation. It's really enjoyable. It's a good one. So yeah, thanks we'll, keep, guys. we'll pick it up again. Yeah, thanks I a lot. I imagine we'll, we'll still be here. Don't worry. Yeah, well, if you, if, you are, I'm, 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 if you are, then I'm definitely going to join you again. Cause I'm really okay. enjoying it. So brilliant. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, we could die. See you. I think I, I really do appreciate the, that it's hard for for your average person to to accept the the, the fine fine measurements that uh, that it takes to detect an exoplanet. I mean, if you're one of the ways uh, they do it is um, they measure how much uh, the parent uh, star, if you like, how much it wobbles. Uh, exactly. But with the uh, Doppler effect, by I mean, measuring. Mm actually managing to measure a change um in, uh, in, in light. light from a star uh, yeah. via you know via doppler effect is is incredible even you know i i'm quite you know i'm reasonably familiar with this this kind of technology and even to me i, I just think that's it's amazing um, and yeah, well, we now... do have the technology to do that um yeah. the uh the gaia space probe <clears throat> is able to uh Take incredibly fine uh, measurements of the position and uh, proper motion of, of stars. But we are able to do it. I um, want to address a comment uh, in the chat on YouTube from Jimbo. Um, he quotes George Orwell saying, "The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their history, their understanding of their history." Um, and then he's what he's doing is he's using that as to say there is the reason for them to lie. Okay, so the the issue really is is the governments do lie, 
but you you really have to have a motivation for the lie that's the first thing and the second thing is yeah, that lie has to produce what i i've actually come to the term um the mechanism of of control so if you lie about something that has to be able to give you some form of power over somebody else just lying about just saying oh i have a ten thousand dollar stereo in my house doesn't give me control over my my buddy at work okay it just doesn't you have to have some kind of uh, mechanism of control lying about distant planets what how how would that control be how <laughs> does that does that have an impact on my life it's just it yeah. doesn't no it doesn't yeah <laughs> and the and the the moon the moon um is in our atmosphere because they detected um, particles of, of whatever it was and the moon goes through, passes through those particles. It's not like we can breathe air on the moon, uh, Jimbo, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, if, they, if they, that's oh. true, then what, how would that control anybody? Okay, so we've now detected that the moon goes through part of our very, very, very thin atmosphere. Oh, All right. It's not even... Oh, it's no, it's not even... Yes, it's just tiny, tiny particles, very, very far apart. Yeah. Oh, some hydrogen particles got out into space. Oh, no. It's all changed yeah. now. It's all flat. Yeah. <laughs> and now flat earthers are saying, oh, we can breathe on the moon. I know. I don't know if any of you guys <laughs> know, but we've, we've just now launched two um, satellites or probes out to the sun so they can now actually map the sun in 3d and they can see 360 degrees and they can now predict yeah. solar flares everything off it um not yeah, that until it. a solar flare knocks out those satellites we can't see them anymore <laughs> well, okay yeah. okay so um, hold on. I, i'm, quite uh, I'm still on youtube jimbo there's the link pip has posted the link come in and explain to me how um the distant planets or even space controls us Come in and explain that to me. What? How? how? Please. He's no, saying this is control, Channel X, hopeless and godless and dependent on government. You know that uh, well, there is... You're dependent on government. You know that, right? <laughs> there is uh, yeah. this, this presupposition, um, un understandably, there is this uh, presupposition that, that, uh, that people think the only way that we can get uh, the information of the, the kind that we've just been talking about is is through space agencies but that that's not actually true um when i you'd have to be um it's universities uh, yeah. well no i mean I, and observations I, well, I have, Amateur. well I, i'm obviously very very yeah. keen uh, astronomer um and with you know it costs a bit of money um uh, but uh next probably not this uh, this season but next year um, I have a setup um, that didn't cost a, a huge amount where I, I can actually um, measure the expansion of the universe. Um, I could I could probably um, detect um, exoplanet transits um, across other stars. Um, you know, it's not you don't have to have a ginormous telescope to do these these kind of things. No, you're quite right. Did your there. setup come with a gatekeeper badge? It didn't, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> that cost it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've, I've got a, I mean, a, it's a, a 14 inch diameter, so 35 centimeter diameter telescope. And the, okay. the, the, the um, I mean, even, you know, like uh, students studying uh, cosmology and, and astronomy um, would use maybe, maybe a 20 inch telescope. They're not, they're not necessarily uh, given the keys to some kind of eight meter diameter thing in South America or something. Um, mm. What I mean, source it, it, have you got? What kind? The Dobsidian? Yeah, Dobsidian. It's a, new, it's a Newtonian. Uh, oh, Newtonian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, cool. it's, uh, it's the cheapest way to do it. Uh, yeah. Newtonian, that's, that's why. Yeah, I've got a Newtonian. Um, yeah. I've got a new turn. I want an I want an Einsteinian <laughs> telescope. Einstein. Uh, he didn't have one. <laughs> no. 
he should, I don't think he should really else. be called uh, a Newtonian, actually, because he kind of nicks the uh, the design of someone else. But, Oop, uh, yeah. yeah. A reflector. But yeah, it's... Um, well, it doesn't, doesn't one of the, like Jimbo's really, going to come in. The good, uh, the good thing about uh, about Newtonian or, or any like a reflecting telescope is uh, because you're not... We were talking about this earlier. Because you're not using glass or even uh, rare glass for, for the optics it's, it's being reflected um, you can uh, uh, you can get more of the uh, more of the light onto the uh, camera sensor yeah like for, for UV yeah. for example I mean if you if you try and image in UV through a refracting lens telescope you lose loads of it just because it will get yeah. uh, um, it won't get through the, the lenses and they yeah, pose the refractors are, have yeah. curved lenses don't they yeah, it's well, they, minor, and they're expensive well, you, or good lenses. Yeah, well, they, the thing of they're very, very expensive because they're because just the nature of lenses, you've got to you've got to pay loads of money um, to get a what you call an apple chromatic uh, yeah. refractor, which is because you get this uh, dispersion of the color, you know, which has to be corrected. Yeah. You go into the thousands, then, don't you? Thousands, <laughs> yeah. five five grand for a for a four inch diameter telescope. Exactly. You get a tube with two mirrors in it and get better <laughs> pictures. Yeah. Exactly. But anyway, that was the, the the point. The sort of take home point of that was you you don't you, it is possible if you wanted to 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 um actually uh, double check a lot of the stuff that you're being told and work just work it out for yourself. You know. Yeah. What sort of pictures do you get of um, of um? Oh my! I can't even remember the name. Yeah, in Orion. Can you get? Or Andromeda. Um, Andromeda. Uh, Andromeda. Is, Andromeda's. Um, well, the, th the, the funny th one of the funny things about about telescopes is the, the bigger the telescope you get, the smaller patch of sky you can actually see. Yeah. Um, and I, if I put a DSLR on the on that telescope, but I wouldn't be able to fit the Andromeda galaxy in the frame. I'd have to take maybe three, three or four pictures and and put them together. Yeah. The, the field of view is too small. I mean, it's a, Andromeda is about six times the the uh, diameter of a full moon in the yeah. sky. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's a, I've I've been building it for ages, and it's a it's um it's predominantly for photography. So it's a it's a fast. It's well, it's a native F four. Um, yeah, because the, the whole idea. F four. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. I should get it down not to bad. Uh, not bad. Uh, yeah, lots of light. <laughs> no, it's F4, but what's the um, Local. diameter of it? Fat. He said, <laughs> "Yeah." Did you well, I know that I know these telescope people don't do focal lengths, so I can only no. ask for the. I can if you can if I if you tell me the. Um, focal ratio and you tell me the diameter of it at least then i know what the focal length is yeah since i math i think oh, you shouldn't do that oh it's a, yeah it's a 1400 mil uh, focal length uh, and 30 well 355.6 millimeters diameter yeah Ooh. That is nice my See, uh, nice size <laughs> The nice thing about my um, photography lens that I use that's you know, 600 millimeters is the fact that um, it is at least ap ap apochromatic because yeah. um, you, need that. You, you, you need that, especially when you're photographing stuff on Earth. <laughs> my my uh, best experience when I first got my telescope was looking at Orion's nebula and seeing the ISS transit in front of it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like half a second, but I just see this little yeah. black thing go past this yeah. purple thing. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's off. I'm trying to take a photograph. <laughs> oh, I couldn't. It was already gone by the time I looked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy called... Um, a guy called Thierry Legault, uh, there's L-E-G-A-U-L-T Legault, um, 
who is uh, probably the world expert at, um, at photographing the ISS um, and satellites and stuff. Um, and again, you know, it's amateur, well, you know, high-end amateur equipment he uses. He uses a 10-inch uh, telescope uh, and a 14-inch. Um, his, his images are absolutely astounding of, of yeah, uh, the nice. ISS. What's his uh, name? Thierry Legault. L E G A U L T. Actually, um, look at Geist View. You can post, put it in the side chat. I can't, I can't even. I'm please. just I'm on my phone, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm on my on. tablet. But Geist View does the same thing. He takes um, his own photos of nebula and stuff. He also does drone footage too. And he spent, uh, was it a year or two years in Antarctica? So he knows about the ice world too. Yeah, it's quite. He, he's got a, he a YouTube. Uh, <laughs> he's got a YouTube channel actually. That guy as well, which is yes, he does. Yeah, uh, there's one actually. He got, he's he got um, he 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 photographed the ISS when there was a an astronaut on the Canada arm, and actually he actually managed to to pick out the astronaut and sent the guy the picture that he'd taken of him from Earth. Um, yeah, t yeah, spell that spell um, that name to me. I can type it out in the side chat. Uh, G E I S T. Hang on, I've got it. I think I've been in the you chat. I think I found it. Thanks. So. L L E G A U L T. Um, but yeah, he's got a website and a, a YouTube. Astrophoto.fr. Uh, yeah, that's the website. He's got a YouTube yeah. channel as well. Right, I'll look for that. Um, thank you, Pip. No bother. I don't know why you guys spend so much okay. money on telescopes. I don't know why you guys spend so much money on telescopes. We all know space isn't real. Mm. <laughs> My telescope only cost me four hundred bucks. They're dome it's a, it's a five foot with a, I think it's a six inch mirror. The focuser <laughs> for my telescope uh, cost cost more than that. <laughs> but I, I bought I bought all the bits for it uh, over several years, you know. So it's not. But, uh, but yeah, I, I saved up to get uh, research grade optics for it. That that was mm. that's the most expensive thing. Yeah, well, that's that's the biggest thing uh, when it comes to your telescope. Unless you've got a good. Um, uh, optic. It doesn't matter what size mirror you got. Yeah. YouTube channel in the in the side chat. The uh, the the mount is uh, is is often as it's expensive crucial. as the telescope as well. Um, cool. Yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. I can go to NASA.gov and get good as good pictures as you guys. <laughs> yeah, but it's more fun when you see it for yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah, you I could never, I could never see the uh, thrill. I basically, I had a telescope for a little while, and I'm like, and it was a crappy one. I mean, I understand. Yeah, and it's also the fact you I still have to squint. Looking at it, I'm like, I, I can, yeah. Saturn looked like a white blob. I could make out the rings, but you know, well, that they exist. It's fake, so it is a white blob. So there you go. <laughs> but then when I looked at it, it's like, yeah. I just don't have the the interest in spending that many hours getting good at it. Ah, uh, lack of patience. There's a guy yeah. in no, um, from uh, where is he from? I can't remember. Some uh, south uh, south of England um, called Damien Peach, uh, who uses a 14 inch telescope, and uh, he's um, he's quite famous for uh, taking pictures of Jupiter. Um, and uh, they're, 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 you know, they're really very, very uh, clear images to give you an idea of what, what's possible with a 14 inch still. Uh, not like Danny from Daytona. Danny from Daytona. Uh, Logic has done him before. He mm. takes these out of focus shots of oh, right. stars <laughs> and planets. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. With a P900, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks like it's taken with a bloody um, kid's camera. 
Is that so concentric it, rings? That's just pulsating ball, pulsating balls of light. Really, is what he gets. Yeah. It's, it's um, the ones I've seen. It's quite. It's quite funny because it's it's um, one of the ways that you can make sure that your optics are aligned is that you deliberately make a star out of focus and you end up mm. with with uh, you know concentric rings that, um and can you see uh, that yes yeah, yeah you see it through the eyepiece you just de defocus uh, and and uh, so all the concentric rings should be you know not not uh, off center or anything you know if the, if your if your optics aren't aren't in line then then it will be all skew if so you adjust it to make sure all the rings are exactly inside each other um so it's uh, an out of focus star is quite a familiar thing um to me <laughs> but, and that's the biggest problem actually with with um astrophotography focus it's, it's uh if you don't it's not it's just not in focus it's the waste of time uh, and it's it's hard to do yep. but, uh, you know, now they're now they're building um, telescopes with inbuilt cameras for amateur. Really? Yeah, um, I think it's Celestron are making them. They're about two and a half yeah. grand. Mm. I mean, they're not not super cheap, but considering what they put in them, so you've got full digital control. And um, it'll snap straight to a laptop. They've had you don't a, need a camera. You don't need a camera attached to the telescope. They've had them for a while, where the mounts had its own little camera for alignment, um, but I didn't mm. know they had imaging cameras. Yeah, yeah, they do now. They've got little CMOS um, images in them. Mm. Well, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If you're going to if you're going to sell a, a half decent package to somebody, it makes sense to put a camera in it as well, because um, the to the manufacturer, the camera isn't going to be hugely expensive. But um, well, all it needs to do is is take the photo off one of the reflecting mirrors. I would say though, it's, it's a it's the equivalent though. If you know, if you're actually quite serious about about it, it was the, the equivalent would be to me like uh, buying a camera but being stuck with the kit lens if you know yeah. what I mean. yeah. um i mean i you can't you can't like um you can't expect one camera lens to do everything and similarly you can't expect one camera to do everything on with the astral photography either hmm. um, but if, if it's permanently set to focus on the the refracted mirror, yeah, then you, uh, it, it's up. Why would you always need to focus it? You just need to find the position and then snap the photo. Mm, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, you'd, you'd need a tracker. Well, I mean, be, yeah, you'd need the tracker to be able to track and open the aperture, but yeah it's not it's not as difficult as actually attaching a camera to the the eyepiece lens and then trying to focus that to pick it up well you probably you'd still need to uh not to have control over uh over the focus it's so it's so fine that yeah but it I, wouldn't I don't, it wouldn't I, be as it wouldn't be as major as if you're doing it out of the eyepiece I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't really. We can do, but you don't. You wouldn't tend to to uh, to shoot through through an eyepiece. Um, you would you would attach the camera with to the focuser with uh, without an eyepiece yeah, in it. But that's but that's what I mean. You've still got to focus the camera with the adjustment Ooh. of the tube as yeah. well. But it's but the the focus the fo focus point is so so fine that um mm. you know it, it can change yeah. with the um like the temperature expanding and contracting the uh the tube of the telescope you know so it's you've got to be in control of it i was just yeah. looking at some here the price just scared the shit out of me um <laughs> sb sbig 
STXL series. Oh, they, yeah. start, they start at 6,495,000 6, upwards. That's, that's just the camera. Yeah. The 1100s is a very, uh, very common, common one. The electronic the and mechanical shirt one. Uh, how much um, is this camera? Um, well, the the eleven hundred what he's talking about eleven hundred and two is seven thousand one hundred ninety five dollars. That does everything. Yeah, that's a, that is a lot of money, but it's not. As you can hassle it looks like a GoPro. Oh, it's really? Not, it's it's not grand for GoPro. It's not astronomical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Get. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't cost as much as the Keck Observatory, though, does it? <laughs> Mind you, I'm probably looking at the wrong cameras. It should go cheaper. <laughs> yeah. But that can get expensive, but it doesn't need to be. You get, um, you get superb images through a, <clears throat> through a, a normal DSLR. Especially yeah. if you if they're astro modified, they take the uh, the UV IR filter. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and a sli uh, slightly longer exposure time. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you can. I've seen I've seen people do ten or maybe even twenty minute uh, exposures if they've got a really good setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then. And as I think I might have said before, the nice thing about using a, di a digital sensor over film is no reciprocal failure, so your exposures don't get screwed up because they're getting longer and longer. Since yeah. as you yeah. expose film, for, for those who don't know, as you expose film for longer, the, uh, ISO, speed, the ISO speed of it reduces. Mm. All right. And the colours go a bit funny the longer yeah. they expose. Yeah, you can get some nice pictures though doing that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's stuff you have to remember. If if exposure, if getting the exposure right is critical, you kind of need to know what the reciprocity failure ratio is, so that yeah. you can extend the sh exposure even more. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you keep trying to expose yourself? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's this thing he does the weekends, you know. He, he's, yeah. he's like that. <laughs> I tend to yeah, use black is. and white. I ain't got to worry about the colours then. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> not like it's not like shooting on Kodachrome twenty five, is it? No, I've got some of that. If anyone wants them, uh, yes, yeah, that'd be great. Apart from you can't get it processed anymore. Um, I've, yeah, I've got yeah, some um, black and white Kodak 100. Yeah, no, no, I was saying specifically Kodachrome, specifically yeah. Kodachrome film. You can't get processed anymore. The last lab doing it closed about yeah. five years ago. I got uh, some Ektachrome. Long now. Oh, Ektachrome's okay. That's e six. Yeah, I've got some Ektachrome. Mm. If anyone needs any, and I've got some um, really slow black and white as well. Oh, Morning, so Alan. Afternoon. Uh, afternoon, George. Hello, George. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hi, George. Hello, hello. Hello, Bungle. Hello. Yeah. Hans bugging me here. He's brought his tennis ball in. He's just being really playful this morning. Yeah, Have you pitted she... him against a flat earther yet for uh, intellectual uh, ability? <laughs> well, sure. actually, I can't. Khan knew, knows that the Earth is spherical. He uh, he demonstrates that to me all the time. He brings a ball in and says, "This is the shape of the Earth." Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Clever yeah, dog. Yeah, and this yes. is how water sticks to a ball. Slobber, slobber, slobber. Slobber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, <laughs> exactly. Water can't stick to a ball. Give it to a dog. They'll get it to stick to a ball. Come on, we all know what shape the earth is. 
tickled. All you have to do is aim a camera at the earth about two or three diameters away, and lo and behold, it's round. Funny that. Oh, George, <laughs> you've got tidy hair. Good job. I done what? <laughs> you've got tidy hair. Oh. I know you get picked is, on it. Is that the mark of one's intelligence, is how one's hair looks? Uh, uh, no. No. Oh God, that's me, by the no. day. Yes. <laughs> yes, after, if it's gray, you're smarter. <laughs> smarter yeah, every was, day. I was on a conversation here just before uh, I came on. Well, I was on, but I wasn't listening because Rumpus and I were having a discussion on gravity <laughs> on uh. Skype here. When you say discussion, uh huh, <laughs> Did you get a word in. <laughs> you do mean, of course. <laughs> well, actually, I, I've learned how to handle rumpus. He and I actually do have uh, meaningful discussions. It's not just one-way communication. <laughs> you just have to bring your A game in the conversation with that man. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's fine. I mean, oh, he I... whoa. <laughs> oh, God, that's scary. Stop throwing the globe around. Ow, I fell off. <laughs> <laughs> so is there people Can't changing their icons that. a lot? I don't recognize uh, any of these <laughs> names. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Zoom, Zoom is really good at allowing you to change your display name. So I see and you can do it during the show as well so you will notice that sometimes the names even change during the show <laughs> okay like that. can't you people have mercy on an old man I'm confused <laughs> enough hey, according to the flat earthers George I have a health condition that affects my short term memory how do you think it makes me feel <laughs> yeah. is that better than George there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong. 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 Wrong with me. Is mine better? <laughs> Mine's the best one. <laughs> uh, alien. Anti smeg alien. <laughs> Anti smeg. <laughs> See, we just lost it now. Now it's just yeah. I never had it, mate. Sorry. <laughs> I'm still looking yeah. for it. <laughs> You're a smeg. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! And unpaid shields has turned up. <laughs> unpaid yeah. bulge. Unpaid bulge. Yeah. <laughs> God, shields get. Yeah, in. bulge. The bulge. Yeah. bulge. <laughs> the bulge rises to eye level. How do you? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you trying bulge. to make me blow tea out of my nose again, are you? <laughs> Did it work? Not Somebody's quite. Gonna... I managed to I'll do wonders for your sinuses. <laughs> I managed to. I managed to just stop myself. You, you were about. You were about a, You were about three quarters of a second early with the comment. <laughs> well, somebody in here is blowing something today. That's all I know. Yeah, my unpaid <laughs> bulge needs blowing. Oh gosh. Um, no, I'm going to actually here. say. Yeah, I'm going to see if Mr. P, Mr. P would like to come in the chat. He's he's been in chats for quite some time, and yeah, uh, he's, he does look like he has a good sense of humour. Mr. P, if you want to get join us, that would be that would. If you got yeah, if you can come on the chat Mr. on the P, point, it would be brilliant. Yeah, and that 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 Obi Wan yeah. beard is good. So come on, come on chat. Yeah, and <clears throat> and we're just here to have fun. Yeah, unlike Ali B. Oh my gosh, is Ali B around? He was. Yeah, he was. He had to be kicked. He, he was escorted out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have missed that. We did try. I tried. We tried. I, I you know, look, we're just we're just here to chat. If you want to come in and chat, that's fine, but all the drama is just not doing it. And his reply was, Well, you here in uh, no. Oh, Ali's now off. Ali B reminds me a lot of Ute. You're could be. Today. It could be that Ali B is Ute. Yeah, they were both in Jose's <laughs> at the same time. Decided to change my name. 
You Josh was in you, you was in Jose's. Yeah. It's all over. No. Ute is everywhere. No, in the meet, in the chat. Oh yeah, he's always in chat. He never goes live. What did you do to the car? That's my daughter's car. She decided to try out uh, the forces of G, uh, G forces. Uh oh. And um, he found out she didn't enjoy them. Oh, she's all right. Looks like she failed. From, from the photograph, it looked like she's okay. So that's good. That's yeah, because I mean, imagine the days of old before they had crumple zones and stuff. Oh, I can, yeah, a car like that, you would have definitely hurt yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then she's got this smashed up car and then it's just all happy and smiling with thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Looks he's like real the uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah for, he's, he was real uncomfortable in that photo. She's uh, limping around like a little old lady. <laughs> well, I just want to actually point that out. He walked away from he, it. Because <laughs> all of that progress was almost entirely due to government uh, mandated safety regulations. You realize that? Yep, they got fed up with all the crash dummies getting broke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am on the children. It, the uh, crumple zone actually came from a designer. Um, uh, there was a backstory that that uh, the car companies would were charging a heard. bunch of money for those a uh, bunch Oops. of money for those um <laughs> for the the. Uh, for the bumpers, and uh, he he built a bumper out of out of a couple of pieces of wood and some beer cans, and drove it into the courthouse to show that he could build a bumper for less than five hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I shared that photo earlier, but um, I just thought. To... You shared that photo earlier, did you say? Ellen? I shared. I said I shared. I shared that photo earlier on some of your stream, but um, I just thought since since we were talking that uh, that was uh, break. That's the the second most struck bridge in the UK. Yep. Which is the first most struck bridge? I don't well, know. Do you think? It's been. It's, <laughs> It's been hit six. Like apparently, apparently, it's been hit sixty-three or so, I can't remember whether I told sixty-three 67, or sixty-seven. Sixty-seven times they have, this year they have, already. What they haven't required that it gets raised? Why? I don't understand. Or, or don't they have a sign that says you know height yes, limit? Oh, yeah. they've got yeah. Yeah. All of they've put they've they've put temporary fencing across the top of it with lots and lots of signs all over it, and of course you've got the. You've got that big I beam that they've installed just in front of the bridge with the uh, yeah, I Chevron see that, painted yeah. on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a trend. That, that, that's pretty good for slicing tops. Yeah. It is a, it is a ra yes, it is a railway bridge. That's one of the reasons why they can't raise the bridge. And they have lowered the road as well. They lowered it. A few yeah, it's weeks. a sunken yeah. road. Yeah. Well, but pour some dirt on the damn track and raise the damn track. <laughs> well, maybe what they ought to do is say um, a quarter mile down the road from the oh, bridge is, is to have there is, George. George, there no, is. is to have something like with um, hanging down that shows the height, you know, so the you hear it scraping across the top. No, say, no, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah. It still doesn't stop well, them. <laughs> all right. Well, then, <laughs> hey, they deserve. So they got it. a smacker thing. What more can you do? You know, um, no, no need to put a sign out that says duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and they go where? <laughs> oh, it's a Citroen relay as well. I haven't realized it. Somebody told him it's a Peugeot, but it's not. It's actually a Citroen relay. Oh, well, yeah, anything foolproof, but nothing can be made damn foolproof. <laughs> um, your daughter's car there, um. Mm -hmm. I've got something to show you if you want to let me share. I, I, I think she was um, maybe trying to uh, do a little bit of glow birth proof. <laughs> show you. That trans band was definitely. No, no picture yet. Hmm. I'll try share. Oh, here we go. 
We have 60 viewing, 61 viewing. Yay. Mr. P's having his dinner, so he won't be in just now. Oh, I, I just caught that. And he's a bit, he's a bit. Oh, tiddly. yes. Seen that one. That's beautiful. A few sheets <laughs> liberated. How <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to put it. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's funny. <laughs> Probably not that's got that funny for the person involved. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be in yeah. Norfolk. That's in America. That person's dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the bloke's open the bonnet. Don't worry, we'll get it run in the stick. Just hold on. Very <laughs> <Yeah>. long <laughs> car. Who is who is Princess Buttercup? Uh, I think that might be Bob. Okay, for Diego. Diego. There you go. Now my daughter, <laughs> she uh, she lost her. The battery got torn out on the first impact, and the second impact, the airbags didn't go off. Ooh, just side airbags when she got hit sideways. Oh, yeah, guys, that's me. <laughs> it's pretty. Hi, Bob. Cool. <laughs> Hello, Pip. Hello, Pip. Hello, uh, Mr. Geriatric. Bob, the trying guy. <laughs> Okay. Feck you's in the chat. Hi, you. Yeah, feck you. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a glorious feeling you have to spanner, isn't it? Except when you realise you really can't use it. <laughs> no, because everyone else has got one. <laughs> everyone else has got one. <laughs> Damn. I don't it's like care. It's four thirty in the like, morning here. It's like having a gun in the Wild West bar. It's six fifty-seven yeah. here. Who do you shoot first? Yeah, but I'm in the future. <laughs> You're in the future. So it's yeah. not 657 here. There was a great short Maybe film, there. really. There's a very <laughs> funny short film, and it's uh, about a 10-minute short film. And the uh, it, a gunslinger walks into a bar in the saloon in the Wild West, and then the narrator starts narrating. But the people can hear the narrator. And the narrator <laughs> tells... Uh, everyone else uh, <laughs> secrets about the different people in the room <laughs> and they start arguing with the narrator and in the end they won't, they won't tell you what happens in the end brilliant actually brilliant brilliant uh, short film oh actually i i Put saw something brilliant on um youtube yesterday it's um called cat shit one <laughs> and it's actually it's actually it's it's CGI, but it's bunny rabbits as US special forces going up against Arabian camels as the bad guys. Who was on drugs with these? Then. I know. Let's have bunny <laughs> rabbits. Awesome. That's a joke. Oz, Jesus. Oh, like, po post links. Post links. Oh, it's Arwen. Here we have Arwen. I, yeah. Hello, chat. Arwen. Welcome, Arwen. No. No. I need the crow after you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be nice what, to say hello what, at least. What an honour. There's there's that one as well. Got a little bit um on a straight bit of road. On a straight bit of road, on a straight bit of road. Very far, I think I might have shown this before. Very fortunately the driver survived with only minor injuries. He needed a change of pants so. though. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, I mean, you would not. It is a problem that. That is a problem we have in modern society. Uh, natural selection no longer works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did not survive. Come on. They yep. did. They did. Wow. Yeah, they drive There's too on the many safety there. nets for the idiots. Yeah. 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 You know, the, uh, the of course, woman of course who, that's cynic. The woman who caused the accident um, pulled out in front, uh, was in the left turning lane and pulled out into oncoming traffic, which my daughter was the oncoming traffic, and was so little distance that neither my daughter nor the person behind her uh, in the other lane was able to break through. There was a uh, sign I once saw. It said, uh, "I don't advocate killing all the stupid people. We should just remove the warning signs and let the problem take care of itself." Uh, well, I, I, told, I told my uh, 
I told my son I had the idea of instead of airbags on the steering wheel, there should be a a, a ten inch spear that would stop people <laughs> from speeding. Well, it also would it would decrease the impact velocity or the, whatever the g forces. Oh, uh, have you seen the there's your crumple? Put, there's your crumple zone. The people that put jewelry and shit over the front of their steering wheel. Oh, they did you see that? Airbag <laughs> into a bloody fragmentation grenade. In this Ooh. case, it didn't happen, but uh, let's see this one. Oh wait, okay. Take a on. close look at the uh, at the rearview mirror on this woman. Um, oh, that oh, she Jesus. had at least. Oh, I don't know how many things she had on there, but she had quite a few. Uh, she had, uh, two huge pounds of obstruction. That's all I know. Huge obstruction. But she was she was innocent also. It was the uh, the other lady. Who did yeah. It. We didn't. I couldn't find. We there was another wrecking yard. I couldn't look at it. You think it'd be better if they added sparkles to the uh, to the airbags? You know, so it, so it's not as bad when it goes uh, like off. a glitter party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that is the real happy, art, a happy trumpet sound. <laughs> Wouldn't it be more like wah, 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 wah. I'm making something happy because I mean you're going through all this trauma. It should be like, you know, oh, I don't know. Ta da! <laughs> yeah, orchestra. <laughs> they um if they actually the took the off the cars, that stop a lot of accidents. If they took the what off the cars, sorry? The steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we won't if barely they drive took the cars off the road, it'd stop a lot of accidents too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. I heard you clear your throat. I heard you clear your throat. <laughs> I heard you clear your throat. Who? Who? Darvels is uh, one of these. Darvels. 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 How would you say that? Oh, okay. Yeah, Darvels. Um, Darvels <laughs> is in there on the corner of uh, another market with 850. We only use the B band right now. It's five miles ish from the border. You wouldn't even attempt A on that? Uh, with uh, uh, another A band carrier, I couldn't tell you. It's a, what, the hell are you, what the hell are you on about, Arwen? Is it Powhatan? No, I, I'm trying to remember which one. I don't think that one was Powhatan. I, I, I suppose what I can do is. Um, I'll, wait, come here. Come and tell us about it, Arwen. That would be the easiest way. We don't yeah. buy it. Well, I do. Therapy. <laughs> well, there's Pip. Is oh. there a... Well, <laughs> I think so. Pip's is, there a, is there a chat associated with this? Yes, yeah. there is a group chat. Uh -huh. At the bottom of the of the window, there is a... There is a... Post, post the link on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did everybody get that link I shared? Yeah, I'll watch it later. It's 21 minutes long. Oh. Uh, it's bloody gorgeous. You'll love it. I've but got if it you in like, my watch later. But it's, it is violent. It's, right it's got bunny rabbits, so you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's got bunny rabbits. Commandos. Violent bunny rabbits. Yeah. I want to see the link. I have to see that. There's grenades. Camels getting like bullets to the head. <laughs> um, Anima yeah. production. No. It's brilliant though. You'll love it. It's Japanese. But yeah. it's in English. Yeah. That's a shocking. Oh, but the graphics is fantastic. What was that joke if um, Middle Eastern, uh, if mid. Middle Eastern uh, Japanese style cartoons—they called Afghan animation. 
Yeah, okay, so I can get the sound. Right. I can get the sound both of the YouTube video and the chat simultaneously. Wait, pause the YouTube video. Yeah. No, no. It's, can you hear the, it? You can't the hear chat it. will still run. Yeah, no, no, the no, chat will still run. Normally, I'm, I'm on my phone. On my phone, usually it blocks out one of the. Uh, one of the. All right. No, mine sources. doesn't. In this yeah. case, yeah. In this case, it doesn't, which is remarkable. You guys, do you want to try your microphone now? Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Guys. So I'm a flat earther, I can't count any higher. <laughs> Dan, okay. Go ahead, take your shoes off. What, to count to two? You see, the main sector is the only one. Well, two feet. Go say something. Something. What? What's wrong? What's the matter, Pip? No, Gauss was wanting to try his microphone earlier, then he left. Now he's back. So I was getting him to test his mic because he's not spoke yet. Well, we, we won't know what he says unless he says it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. Try your mic. That was deep. I just what mean, um, yeah, what no. was this on uh, Jose's show today? I was just kind of reviewing. It says the end of Riley and Spurs. Mm. You'll have to watch it, really. Was it's it funny? Drama, drama. Oh, uh, was okay. it? You'll never have the end of Riley and Spurs. They just come back like herpes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine how Riley can go around holding his head up at all after that uh, disaster he posted that he calls a thesis. <laughs> uh, George, your problem is, is that you are implying that people have shame or oh, integrity yeah. and you can't, you can't project your own personal integrity on other people. There are people out there that just simply don't have that. Well, yeah, so I, I guess uh, that's very true, obviously, uh, when it comes to uh, Riley. There's Ow. there's no doubt. You have a site built already? Um, that was my surgery. And you see that little piece of foam under the foot? that's actually holding the tendon that they moved across the top of my foot. It's anchoring it underneath my foot. How? How did you do that? I uh, had an ankle reconstruction. Here's right. the other side. <laughs> that's where they had to take out the bone. A little bit. They've done a good job of your shoe and your trousers, the other side. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. And then there was this one, where they did the Achilles extension. Cool. How, long, how much longer is it before it all or is it set? Okay, already? I've got two more weeks in the plaster I'm in. Yeah. And then I've got another four weeks in a plaster with a rubber sole on it. And then another month after that in a moon boot. Sorry, in Mars boot. Mars boot, yeah. Yeah. You do what, Venus boot? They're too hot. Yeah, I don't like greenhouse gases. <laughs> It'd really suck to have a Pluto boot. And it already had. Question, what I was asking before when I meant, is there a chat associated with this? Is there a YouTube streaming that goes along yes, with this? Yes, there is a YouTube yes, stream that goes along with this. 
Let me just post it. Let me. Oh, is this said I prefer? Okay, I got it. All right. I... No, that's not it. Jesus, what the hell? Uh, is going on? Let me let me find it for you, George. Hang on. Is George well, I'm, on it, I'm on it right oh, now. There, there's Mr. Phoebe to everybody, and I prefer Grace to everyone. And uh, which one? <laughs> no, right I've one. changed now, George. I need to keep up. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, thanks. There it is. I've posted Alan's link in there. Yeah, I got it now. I was on, I was on it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, there is that one, which is a permanent, which is the same for every every one of these shows, which is every kind event. of handy. Every, well, every uh, instant event, anyway. I see um, Charlie's comment about Gleam. Is Gleam gracing our pages still with his nonsense? Ah, uh, don't care. Yeah, Gleam kind of initially started off like he sounded like he knew what he was talking about, but he has since opened his mouth to dispel that notion. <laughs> George, that was epic. Someone's getting a hot mic. Can hear someone. Someone's uh, watching something on TV. Yeah. Ken, it's Ken. 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 Hot mic, Ken. 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 Yeah, Ken. Hot mic, Ken. The people can just try to imagine how can we do that. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, think I might have okay. to mute him. Yeah, I would do. Yeah, that. please. Just please. in case. No. I think Tony and Aaron should come in here and have this discussion. Uh. Right, so I'm a speaker, I'm going to sing. Go on, start singing, Pip. No, <laughs> not with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we've, we've got to try. I'm still hearing somebody uh, coming through headache. in the background. That's Ken. Yeah. No, I need to okay. Ken. <laughs> if this is the lamest hangout ever, why the fuck are you hanging out? Yeah, Doors that way. Bye. Because they've got nothing better to fucking do. That's why. Oh, GPS has got his sparring partner. No, That's we don't. Need, see. I mean, what do we need to discuss? Earth isn't flat. I think we're just a bunch of guys having guys and gals having coffee together right now. We're yeah. not talking about anything major. No. We're just kind of enjoying yeah, each other's company. Yep. Yeah. Just yeah. Just well said, now. Bob. Yep. So who's this that's just joined? <laughs> the government is lying to us, guys. Yeah, we're not so being science. Abused, Bob, yeah, not sure being is. abused. They're using science and technology to enslave yeah. humanity. What are we going to do about it? Uh, yeah. It's Mars. Just get rid it's of Mars. Mars. Yeah. yeah. Bob, the well, science guy, uh, got a woman addicted to yeah. drugs. Yeah. 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 Bye. Bye. I have a Bye. Bye. link to Bye. an article. Bye. About Bye. What are we going to do about technology and Yeah. Well, don't yeah. buy any. I'm already in, so don't let him in. That's by far. I'm in here. What are we going to do? Keep using technology. Yeah, I'm going to keep trusting in science and the technology that I use to be able to talk to the people I, that I associate with. Yeah. I just don't get what's wrong with that man. He should know by now that people don't like listening to his nonsense, but he just keeps spouting it. 
the, it's his way of getting attention. He's a pretty lonely guy, it looks like. Um, that you know, my he, name. He just likes being being controversial. Yeah, but it doesn't get him anywhere. It gets some attention. At least it's well for f- maybe for a minute or two, but then after that, he's he's tossed out on his ear into the gutter. Well, he likes that. He views that as vindication that you know he's being oppressed. I by suppose. The man. Yeah, he's a martyr. Yeah, that's that's all he does. You know, he's. I've never been really impressed the, with him. There was a, uh, as far as I am aware first flat earther arrested a couple of days ago. Don't know if anyone heard about that. No. It was uh, oh, Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn. Um, oh, oh she's Marilyn got Sutton herself arrested, has she? Yeah. Yeah, she did. What doing? She oh, was... Um, New Zealand was some, lady. No, no, American. She's in um, um, PA. Oh really? She yeah she she goes around school. She goes. To, yeah. She's always at the council she's, meetings. Oh, everywhere. I know the one. She's the one who yeah. takes it into board meetings and stuff and that's rolls it out. Yeah, yeah and into the banks and all sorts of places. I thought, she get rest- yeah, I thought as soon as I saw that, I thought it's just a matter of time before that happens. Um, she was at oh gosh, what was it? And they called the cops. They asked her to leave. She wouldn't leave. And so they call the cops and the cops put her in handcuffs and took her away. And she hasn't got a phone, so she can't, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's dear. not getting much attention. It really isn't. I mean, the video yeah. of that has got like 120 views. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Hey. Like <laughs> aren't even, I mean, as if fun. people care if a flat earther uh, is a martyr. Even flat earthers aren't particularly interested. There's, there's some flat earthers they pay attention, some to people they ignore. Zoom Truth is a, a channel, they ignore him. Um, but Authentic Intent, a lot more people pay attention to him. And I don't know what the uh, <laughs> difference is. Oh, gosh, is Authentic oh, Intent oh, still authentic uh, intent. roaming around Minneapolis? A, yeah. Oh, no, he's wanna, a bad man. I want to apologize uh, to the panel and everybody in the audience. Not all Pennsylvanians are that. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you off. Just this one. Yeah, it's not It's not your fault you live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody's you perfect. Why do you think I moved? <laughs> <laughs> Becky's asking, what was she doing to be asked to leave? She rolled Probably up with her, her signs usual. and she was disrupting. Um, what usually happens is, is they, people, they cause a disruption. Uh, people are like, can you, can you please do that somewhere else? And they'll just basically refuse. Um, you know how it is. It's just like argumentative. You know, you know we watch the Globe Live tour. Yeah. People, they just get argumentative. They think they're right. And so they stand their ground and then it doesn't work out too well for them. And hey, just Pep, your voice has changed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're growing up. Yeah. yeah, my voice is broken. Yeah, you don't sound as cute and innocent. <laughs> or Scottish. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from Morningside, you see. <laughs> I'm familiar with Portis. I think that's what it's called. Porsche, yes, Hannah Porsche Anderson, Cottage. Marilyn Spirit Level, that lady. Marilyn yes. Spirit Level, there we go. Yeah. yeah, Gmail, that's her account. Her, her channel name is Marilyn Spirit, Spirit Level Gmail. <laughs> <Can't get laughs> yeah, that's what her account says. Oh, my God. oh well. Yeah. Who is that? Who's playing a game? Someone is playing a. Alan. Someone's playing a shooting. Not yeah. me. Playing a shooting game. Uh-huh. No, I was I'm just. There. I was trying to display something on the screen and uh, it won't let me. So yeah, right. I was then. I was then trying to print it and then um, the. Print, uh, the the printer option I tried. Uh, didn't 
want to play so I was getting the uh, Windows doing that you get occasionally when um, you try and do something and it doesn't like it I thought you were just hitting it to get it to work <laughs> <laughs> there is a term for that isn't there there's a term for hitting something to get it to work percussive maintenance that's yeah. it <laughs> Um, uh, back, back when I was a boiler maker welder, we used to call a hammer a gasometer. <laughs> if you can't fix it with a hammer, it's an electrical. Get a ball. bigger hammer. No. This is the first so you Jeremy don't Clark's succeed. Get a bigger hammer. Yes. If you can't fix it with a hammer, it's an electrical fault. <laughs> Still get the hammer. When, when, I was, when I was in the RAF, we essentially had two levels of um, people Who's that worked on the equipment. Bag? Oh, it's not, it might be the. It's a whoosh noise when you speak. It could be the spin dryer going because the spin dryer suddenly decided it's going to go. Alan? We, yes. Is it is it um, just me or is it every like for me every every Wednesday night or Thursday morning for me you're doing washing or spinning your load? <laughs> no, we seem to have the washing machine on all the bloody time. <laughs> because I would run it. Load. See, I would <laughs> I would run the I would run the thing overnight, but um, yes, as like somebody a person. Yeah, but unfortunately, <laughs> but unfortunately, the only person who lives in this household who has a full-time job um, tends to get in. Well, he hasn't got in from work yet again tonight, and he's probably going to have to leave to go to work again at four o'clock tomorrow morning. So, yeah, walk in the door, get your shitty clothes off, put them in the wash, and then put them in the dryer before you go to bed. Yeah, he, yeah. He basically he gets in, goes to bed, and goes to sleep, and, and and the washing machine keeps waking him up. So I've decided that I can be kind enough and um, not. Yeah, we we don't run the washing machine while he's trying to sleep. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, tell him to wash his own fucking clothes then. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Well, we have to be, we have to be a little bit bloody reasonable. Like I said, he is the only one in the household who actually has a full-time job. Um, Alan, you've done your bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've done your bit, mate. You don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> well, the. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to have to worry about it soon because they're, move, they're moving out middle of next month because they've got the house sorted. Because they're damn, I'm damn certain, because I'm damn certain I'm not having them living here with a little baby. Oh, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. That'd make the hangouts pretty interesting. <laughs> My four-year-old sleeping quietly next to me on the bed. What will be the difference between a crying baby and a flat earther? And it's pretty much the same. Oh. <laughs> you can, you, yeah, you can make a crop. Mine knows what it's, gravity is. It, it's the very easy. between crying babies and flat earthers is babies eventually grow up. <laughs> yeah. Gleam. Yeah. Boom, boom. Gleam. Trying to. Pit fight still in the chat. I he's not happy unless he's I've arguing got, with somebody. I wouldn't know. I've got him blocked both on YouTube and Discord. Yeah, he's trying to argue with Bob. He's trying to argue with GPS. He's trying to argue just anybody who can get to pay attention to him. Well, it'd be all right to argue with him if he knew what the fuck he was talking about, but he hasn't. I'm sorry, Gleam. I'm. I'm not even going to reply to that. I'm not. I'm not interested. Sorry. Yeah, I did predict it because when you when you say um, when you say to somebody in a chat, you say when they made a comment, you say nobody cares, and they they reply, "Well, you obviously did. You care enough to reply to me." 
That's a crime for attention. That's so predictable. <laughs> So, well, the thing is, it's it's much easier to talk to an idiot than talking to someone that thinks he knows physics but doesn't. Yeah, it's difficult to win an argument with a clever person, but it's bloody damn impossible to win an argument. Win an argument with a yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's all good, clean. It's all good. Well, the hardest thing is to have an argument with someone when you don't know their freaking position. Yeah. Um, right. And when they argue for flat Earth for for fifty hours and then say, "Oh, I'm not a flat Earther." Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, he's he's presented his full data. I can. Well, his three-page oh, hokey. Oh yeah. gosh! Let me drop everything that I have. Let me drop my my everything in my life so I can read that. Yeah. Oh. Which is probably somebody else's, but no, oh, but oh, yeah. Hey, it, it it it's his prerogative. If he wants to argue with everyone about what shape he thinks it's supposed to be, even though he doesn't believe the shape it's supposed to be, that's his problem. I don't care about the man. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna. I'm just trolling the hell out of him. He keeps trying to send me data and stuff, and I I won't even bother opening the link. <laughs> You know, What's that really just mom? drives him insane. Who's a soccer mum? Yeah. <laughs> What's soccer a soccer mum? Mom? I don't... A soccer mum. I don't mom. know if you're going to be able to see this it, uh, very well, but I'm just going to throw this up. A soccer mum in the United States is uh, a mother that ferries her children around between soccer practice, soccer games, and kind of lives her life vicariously through her children playing soccer. Okay. I, Driving I a kind of van did. with a load of washing. I mean, there are, there yeah. are uh, parents that really get into it. I mean, up here uh, in northern Minnesota, it's not soccer moms as much as hockey moms, you know. They, parents that really get into their kids' junior sports. <laughs> I was, I, I, really I, was the, I was the dad that had to take the kids to all of their sporting events or, uh, and other activities they wanted to do. Not that I ever pressured them into doing any of it, you know, but it was like, if they wanted to go somewhere, I ferried them. Taxi well, well, it's more and than really that, enjoyed but it. it's more than that, oh, Alan, yes. it's more than that. I mean, there's parents that get into it so much that, I mean, it becomes such an integral part of their life that, I mean, they, they show up at these games and they get really mad if their kids aren't All right. making perfect moves or if uh, Kind of like a dance does. mom, the same idea. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Dance yeah. mom, yeah. 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 Well, or a theater, yeah. a theater mum sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, they take that's all plain. the fun out of the sport for the kid because. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Probably because they're a He's a dance mum. There's blue. Yeah, dance mum. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you guys see the um, graph on graph. the screen? Yeah, yeah, we can. Mm. Well, I can. Uh, yeah, I, it's a bit, it's a bit fine, isn't it? It's a bit thin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's because yeah. that's because that Actually. was because it printed that was because it printed a lot of points and um, you'll you'll notice I had to use a log log axis on the scale to make it even remotely useful. Yeah, what's and, your um, what's your maximum height on that? Uh, they both go out 60, to. 000? They both. They they're both in meters and they both go out to. Um, Part to to sixty four thousand to six six thousand four hundred kilometers, but it is in, but it is recorded in meters in on both axes. And the green line, which is the one that appears to be almost straight, yeah. is um, straight is is actually hidden is hidden height. Um, taken from the surface of the planet, so it's basically it's the. Um, it's no not the tangent. YouTube, it's no the one can hidden. read that. <laughs> right. Okay. 
I shall. I shall um, yeah. stop sharing it and um, put it back. Yeah, it was. I'm, I will. Um, <laughs> Hello, Shills. Yes. Pennsylvania ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Says you. The whole puzzle in all this is, you know, you constantly hear about globe earth proofs and stuff demanded by these flat earthers and there's only one that you need and we already have it and that's you take a photograph of the earth out you know one or, or two or three di earth diameters away you point a camera toward the earth take a picture my gosh there it is it's round yep well, sure. or a sunset need? yeah but that's too or easy yeah <laughs> Sunsets debunks the whole thing. Well, all you really need to do, if if it's all a conspiracy, then you get some experts in photography or experts in videography to confirm your belief that all the pictures that NASA provides are all demonstrably fraudulent. Well, it's not only you NASA. That, I mean, the Japanese that, have photographs, exactly. Jackson, the Russians have photographs, Lisa, the Chinese, the Japanese. It's just the list. Yeah. First start with NASA. And they have at least 120,000, in my estimation, at least 120,000. Actually, um, <clears throat> is it the 1946 P2 photo? I want them go. to debunk that one. Hmm. First photo to ever show Earth curve from outer space. Yeah, it's not really a question. Question of why people stick with, are sticking with this. And actually, I don't really. Even get it, well, I mean, it boils down to it has to be willful. I mean, adult males and adult females can't be that stupid, you know. Well, I guess they can be, but. There's something, there's something that's blocking the information. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It really is. There's it's something their narrative, the it's what makes them feel special and right. sets them apart and gives them mm. some power they don't have in real life. Mm. But you there's know, a people pay them attention trait. here. There's yeah, people pay attention trait. to them in here and you know, it, it makes them feel better than the way they get ignored in real life. Yeah, they have yeah, secret hidden there's information. Probably, yeah, there's probably something to that. They feel so inadequate in their own lives. Uh, probably don't are paid well, much attention by it, friends it, or family. Here's the thing about that is everybody has, it, it, you know, the feeling of insignificance and the feeling of inadequacy. I was, um, I was photographing a, basically a girl that was pretty enough to be a supermodel and she felt inadequate. And then I have another friend of mine who's just, just genius and, uh, you know, considers himself, you know, not very bright because he forgets things. And his IQ is just, I mean, everybody has inadequacy. Everyone has feelings of inadequacy. They also have things like the, the imposter syndrome. Um, people, are, people, many, many, many people struggle with those kind of feelings. It's not unusual. And some people, do, and people deal with them differently. Yeah, but on the other hand, then we have people like Quantum Eraser and Riley that have um, feelings yeah. of superiority that they don't deserve. Yeah. Yeah. D I mean, really, really, really seriously. Dunning Kruger, the Dunning Kruger um, um, idea uh, really needs to be expanded upon. I think they need to do further research into things like this type of conspiracy idea where people. I mean, if I decided I know more than 
all mathematicians and scientists and physicists in the in the whole world. There's there's something there that needs to be studied. I really feel that. That's a delusion of grandeur. Basically. Simple as that. Simple yeah. as that. You think, just to... Yeah. And then I'm and better you... than everybody else. So it's a delusion. I, I, I don't and think then it's that's... just focused by the flat earth conspiracy idea. Yeah, I, I don't okay. think that comes under the umbrella of an extended Dunn Kruger. I think what okay. you're talking about is some real mental deficiencies or some mental illness there. That's that is the question. I, if, I if disagree. Like that. Okay. I disagree. Oh, sure. and as as I if you've listened to Quantum you Eraser lately, I mean the man is devolving the same with uh, Riley. I mean, the, these men are uh, sinking lower and lower week by week. Mm. There's something going on upstairs. There's a lot of broken glass in their heads. Yeah, I wouldn't say an illness, but some form of delusion is causing them. No, to... no, it's an illness. I mean, listen to Kwame Eraser, my God. There, there's no discussion whatsoever. I mean, the man is just one uh, lame insult after another and screaming. I mean, the man's going psychotic. That picture looks better there, Alan. Yeah. I, did, I, I, I caught a part of Jose's chat with, with uh, Nathan Oakley, and um, I didn't catch all of it, but I was able to get, get a few minutes and there was just hmm. a man in the background screaming insults. Well, who yeah. was that? Who was that angry man just shouting, angry cursing? And who was that? Quantum Eraser. I, I was like, what? Yep. Yes. What? Oh, gosh, that's just, oh, no. I, felt, I actually felt sorry for him because Jose was just sitting there smiling. He isn't impacted by that. It doesn't affect him. No. Very, very strange. Is this being shared? Okay. Oh, look, you've got the planets all jumbled up. Good job. Right. How to feel insignificant. Is that Beetlejuice? No, wait for it. That's scary, isn't it? Hmm. Not really. Yeah, feel bad. I mean, we can see how, Santa. how big, we know how big Jupiter is. Right. I mean, Saturn, Jupiter, those are both big. Uranus, you can actually fit 64 Earths into Uranus, 65 if, if you relax. <laughs> I knew that was coming, Shields. Uranus. <laughs> Look at the size of Cirrus. Hey. 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 Uh, it, it, it just blows me away. You know, Victoria's think, my favorite planet. Yeah, just to think how small we actually are. Sun. You, you got to remember, there's also a contingency in the flat Earth thing that are there for religious reasons. You know, you got to keep that in mind because that was entertaining. I can't believe, I can't believe there's a star called the Pistol Star. <laughs> the what? <laughs> But there's whoever's breathing, you know, it's really turning me on, and I'm, I'm starting to really <laughs> dig it. Get Stalin, move your mic away from your mouth. Sorry, no, 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 we're gonna have, have a chat. We're gonna have, we're gonna have a chat later because I can't have a horny on page shelves. No, 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 no. No, but at least I, I don't think I was as heavy, was I as heavy as um, unpaid though. Yeah. With the breathing, what was it? Yes, yes, it was you. No, they, Definitely. But the but the thing is, we've got a contingent of flat earthers that are there for religious reasons. We've got some that are there because they've just been conned into believing something. Got some in there that are they're there to con people. I mean, to 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 just go in and say, well, you know, there's you know a feeling of superiority or inferiority, and 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 paint with such a broad brush. I really think that's doing a, a disingenuous service. By saying that, I, I really disagree with with what you guys said earlier. What that that flat earthers have some form of delusional problem? 
I believe there are some that do, but I don't I don't think it's as, you know, a wide sweeping broad brush thing. Uh, the the big hitters are the ones with the delusion that they're they're indoctrinating their little followers into. That I can just about go along with, yeah. I, I, I can agree with something like that. Yay me. That looks really? like Texas. I got shields to agree. That ain't hard. Just tell me there's an oily midget somewhere and ask me if I want to go. I'll agree. <laughs> uh, I just thought you wanted to fit 64 suns up your anus. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like Texas. Like Where is it? That's just something that I ran across on the road the other night on my way home. This is Michigan at sunset. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Florida, Michigan. And, you know, there's a couple of things on here that are kind of interesting. Really? You know, this rules out a flat earth. You see these lower clouds are real dark. Uh -huh. That was you in Discord clouds. today, Bob. What? That was you in Discord going, explain this. Explain how this works on a flat Earth. Explain yeah, how this me. works on a flat Earth. <laughs> yeah. A perfect example, Bob. Really yeah, cool. I know. A, and a better, you know, better example is that double lenticular cloud. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the other one there, too. But this one, and that's the other one. I, I presented Gleam with both of these, and it said, explain how this rules out the flat Earth. Well, you can't do that on one photograph. Yeah, actually, you can, this one. Yeah. <laughs> and then and he goes, well, where, where are your equations? And I said, it's basic geometry. I mean, figure it out. And then he says, well, give me a drawing. So I did him a cartoon. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, this cartoon. is the problem with some of the zealots in flat Earth is they can't comprehend what they're even looking at or they you know? can comprehend it and it scares the hell out of them well yeah, yeah. It, it violates their it violates their narrative and then of course yep. you have the people like oakley and such that prey on those rather weak-minded individuals and i hesitate you know, to even get call money them out of them so I, I hesitate to even call them weak-minded because you know what we can all be fooled yeah, we can all be conned bad? There's no ether band there, Bob. Can we, though? Can we? Yeah. You sure about that? Absolutely. Just asking Well, the question. I think that we can all be fooled, but when you see photo after photo after photo like this, <coughs> what are the chances are that some nefarious organization is planting these photos, including this one <laughs> that I took myself? on the side of a road <laughs> anybody can walk down a road or drive down a road look out at the setting sun and see something like this and recognize what it is but see the thing is you got people like sean g you got people like jose they they got conned and they're no different than any other person walking around they can be conned i like to think of myself as a pretty sharp guy i've been conned a few times in my life We've all been conned a few times yep, in our life, exactly. but the thing is, we learn from them and eventually yep. come to yep. the understanding that we were wrong and have the personal integrity, like God's grasshopper on my last video. He actually came to my channel and put a note up and said, look, I'm sorry for my behavior last night. I was drinking. I was wrong. But here's my point. Can we discuss cool. this point? And we did. That is, that is very cool. It was, and you know, and I was the first one when I made the follow-up video on that to point out the fact that this was a man of integrity. People yeah. like Gleam don't have integrity because they can't admit to themselves that they were wrong and their worldview is wrong. So, but it could be it could be coming from a place of fear, you know, the the fear of you know shaking up their whole worldview. Are you afraid of? finding new information that i'm not but i know a better understanding are. of your world nope not a bit okay well then that's because you're normal that is a normal uh, response by a mature hmm. adult you know, maybe, uh, i don't know if i go that far and have to take that into account yeah. Steady maybe, on that, Bob. Maybe yeah. in this particular aspect, I would let you get away with calling me normal, but <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> might just say normal and unpaid. But, but, I, but I, 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 Bob, I, I do understand. I do understand where you're going with that, and I do understand what you're getting at. So, and, and in that regard, I do agree. But so, uh, you know, it, it bothers me when people use broad brushes on both sides. <clears throat> 
and and that's something that I'm hoping that if I bring this up and I bring it to people's attention, maybe that'll calm down a little bit. No. That point is well taken. So I you think know, when I've um because, I, okay sorry because I I, I, I think you when you're insulting when you're flat out insulting the other side like when uh, when Rumpus says oh, you fucking moron you you idiot. All that does oh, I is rarely weaken, do that, but I am position. pointing out the fact that this is a and very Bob, self-explanatory photo. Right, and Bob, you rarely do that, and that's why I admire you. I hold you in very high regard because of that. Well, thank you. You know, guys, you're, you're sitting here, and my German Shepherd companion is looking, and he's kind of a, got this angry look on his face. He's really taking offense to you guys saying that these people are being conned you know con here says you guys have no idea what being conned is if you're conned you've got his teeth marks on your spine yeah Cap captain kirk was <laughs> captain kirk was conned okay yeah <laughs> okay so i was i was trying to say that when i've spoken to gleam and it's a shame he doesn't join the panel oh, really. shit, there's a toad in here yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, just be back, no, no, okay. Don't worry, I can go. It's all right. A buddy of mine is uh, in for chemotherapy right now. He's dealing with cancer. It looks like he's got it beat, but he's he's still on chemotherapy, and he's so wanting to get the hell off that pump and go home. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's um, doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 it was colon cancer. They caught it real early. So he oh, has cool. very good chances of beating it. So, well, yeah. Pass on our, yeah. pass, I'm sure everybody will, will join me in saying, pass on our good wishes to him. Yep. Certainly pass on mine. Yep, for sure. I will do that thing. Matter of fact, I'll just, I'll point him to this video and the timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to so make anyway, sicker. God damn it, Shields. Anyway, don't make him sicker, okay. anyway, <laughs> Bob, I'm I'm so sorry that I interrupted your your presentation, um, but I I had a mouthful of power bar when the topic first came up, and I had to finish chewing it, and you know, sorry about that. Tony, you are you are hurt from what what happened earlier today, are you? Yeah, of course I am. I mean, you know, when people tell you they don't like you, that's not very nice. You know, I join here. I, I try to talk, but, you know, that's oh. fine. That's fine. No. Hey, uh, when that right. was still going good. on, well, when that was going on, I actually jumped in to try to distract a little bit because she was just, it. Uh, when someone is angry, for whatever reason, she could be dealing with something, I don't know. Uh, I but when say, someone's I think angry, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter what you respond. I think someone not li uh, liking someone, that's fine. Um, but I think, um, you know, normally I probably wouldn't join somewhere and make it as public as that, but that's fine. But, you know, it's only a mature reaction is to look at strong feedback and think about it, which I have been, you know, and if you guys don't want me here, I'd rather be told and then I can leave because absolutely I don't want to be. Oh, uh, no. Oh, my back. goodness. No, of course we want you here. <laughs> Good grief. No. No, no, totally. no, I take exception I know, I, to. No, I genuinely mean it because I think I'm being censored, but that's just my reaction, and that's an emotion. No, by her, not by him, just by her. Just okay. never mind. When that was there. okay, okay Tony, when so that let was me explain. going on, no, 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 just let me explain. Just let me explain first. Please do. So, so um, just because I deliberately control my reactions and try and control my emotions, so that obviously I don't tend to have outbursts, doesn't mean that I'm emotionless at all. Yeah, I just control them quite well. <laughs> So, you know, you shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that one doesn't have emotions. Well, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like most yeah. normal people, like most breathing people. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you know, personal attacks when I've never even spoken to the lady. Uh, and I'm sure I am annoying. Right. <clears throat> As we all are on occasion. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, God, but... is he still talking? <laughs> I, I, during that, during that uh, interaction, I at no point thought, oh, well, you know, he, she does have a point. I thought, who who's she talking about? <laughs> who was it that yeah. was attacking you? Twit, yeah, you didn't hear twit, it well, did you? It was twit. But it's fine, right? These things are fine. People can can do that. It's all part of, I suppose, the narrative. Um, um, yeah, but who was it? Twit. 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 twit, twit. Oh, twit wit. I've yeah. heard of that name before. Toadie, yeah. can I? Totally. I, 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 I
But Can my I point say is, so, so hang on. So I'm naturally um, on guard after such an attack. Yeah. And so if the other people who I generally regard as reasonably getting on in a panel are also concerned about it, you know, that will obviously play on my mind. So of course I'm going to be sensitive. So I'm explaining the level of sensitivity yeah. that I'm feeling. Because yeah. for someone to say, I hate you, everyone thinks you're crap, you're the worst person. And a lot of things I think that were a little bit untrue and some of them might well, you know, certainly be true. Yeah. Obviously, um, I need that feedback because like anyone, I certainly well, don't go around deliberately uh, upsetting people. Totally. Well, the, reason why, the reason why I asked... Go ahead, Alan. I was going to say, when, when she... I, although I was in the call when she was saying that, uh, I was also listening with um, several other people, some of whom I think are actually in the call at the minute, um, or have been, and we were like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Tony, Tony's really nice. Tony's like, what is she on about? What is her, you know, to, to, quote, to quote a rather good film, what is her major malfunction? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think if I was trying and, to sum uh, that up, you are always welcome on streams that uh, I am running. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, so I think to sum it up, I think she doesn't like uh, the fact that I haven't paid a lot of dues over the years, right? To a lot of people, you know, like you know, dot my cap because obviously I am reasonably new. Yeah, and obviously I am that, you know, there. So we go on. No, yeah, you don't have to pay any dues. Well, yeah, but I mean, she was saying part of her argument was right. The like kind of well, quotes exploded onto the scene or whatever she said. I think the right. second bit. No, yeah, that I, was I, complete. I, so second bit, I well. yeah, which is yeah. which is fine. That's fine, right? I can deal with people. Uh, you know, not everyone likes everyone. That's fine. I think then she said uh, there was a lot of know it all. And and to be fair, I am knowledgeable on no. topics I'm knowledgeable on. But as everyone on this panel certainly knows, there's a lot of things where I've been, um, you know, educated. Uh, over the last six months by people much, much more knowledgeable than me. So that's certainly there. And then I'm enthusiastic and I, I take that one on the chin. I am. I like to do things like experiments and not experiments, observations, practical things. And that's also known, right? Um, that's part of what I find rewarding uh, about these things, yeah? You know, talking, but then going and doing things and then coming back, right? Well, I'm, I'm screen sharing my thoughts on the topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I don't bullshit. understand what she means by exploded on the scene from nowhere. It's not like you were a post turtle. You had, you've obviously got background. You put out information and some very good opinions and presentations. People listen to things like that. And as a result, you get popular. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah my, my whole, my whole thing, my whole thing about it is, why would you bring uh, come into a public platform and start attacking somebody? It's the same as what happened the day before when when people are talking over each other, and there's no information being passed back and forth. You know, at, at some point, at some point, somebody has to be an adult and just say, "Oh, look, and that's it's enough." So I think I think what she was saying, if you listen to her narrative, uh, Bob, and obviously you went on there, is I think she was making the point, and it, I think it was wider than me, this one, that Jose's... Sorry, there's background noise somewhere. Quick somewhere. question, can anybody hear me? Because uh, I, I was... Okay. Yeah, I've think, muted Ken for, for, okay. for, for now. So, okay, so I think that um, she was trying to say that there's a lot of panel hangers or whatever, which obviously fall onto the globe side, yeah? And so therefore the show dies. You told me she said, oh, Discord died, didn't she? So part of her rhetoric was that, yeah. And obviously I'm identified as one of these evil panel hangers, which, which is fair enough. I'm on there uh, often and I will take that on board and maybe uh, moderate uh, joining Jose's. Um, well, well, Tony, I, I got to say that, uh, you know, in my opinion, the worst, the worst thing that you do or the, the worst thing that you do, in my opinion, is you tend to say, yeah, a lot. And I know that's, that's just a UK thing. I agree. You're correct. Yep. He I'd like, watches I just a lot them. of Phuket word videos, and I mean, and, if, you know, admires him deeply and wants to just <laughs> and, if, and, and look at it this way: if if that's the worst I can say about you, at least in my opinion, you're doing pretty damn good. I think the other thing, you know, and obviously I reflect on it. I think the other thing I do do is I, like all of us, want to eagerly come in with. A point. <laughs> you said do do. 
so I think you know um, I don't think I'm alone in doing. I think yeah. a lot of us like to keep a point, a point, a point, a point, a point. But um, that's just part of the the format. I don't know. Yeah, Most of the time when I come into these panels, it's just basically to chat with some some intelligent people that have interesting things to say, and on occasion. You'll get a flat earther that comes in and tries to, you know, present a uh, an opinion or something, and we can discuss that like adults. I've I've actually had some decent conversations with some of them, and then you know you get people that just come in and talk out their ass, and then they're fun to have fun with. Uh, Tony, what hmm. I took exception to was her being the authority on who can and cannot be part of this conversation. Well, that's the censoring thing. That's the bit that I really object to. I got very upset about the other day when she muted me again for nothing. Because, you know, as I say, there's when you want to throw rocks at someone, right, if they've got certain things they do, it's very easy. I guess I'm quite difficult to throw rocks at, right, because there's not a lot of objectionable things. Like she objected to the fact that I'm nice to flat earthers, right, um, because, oh, that's been tried before and we should not do that. Um, and as I made the point, if I'm in a forum, you know, I'm, I'm in the forum. And if I'm not in that forum, I'm somewhere else. Yeah, but as long as I'm in the forum, I won't be censored. Yeah, that, that certainly yeah, won't. Yeah, Tony, um, Michael Shermer, mm. who's been a skeptic for 25 odd years, he stated that when you are talking to someone who is into a conspiracy like the Flat Earth, is that you don't attack them and you don't attack their argument per se. You agree to their argument and then show them the flaws in their argument. But um, if, if you do that, you seem to be the nice guy. And some people just want you to attack them, and that's not right. Well, we've all got different approaches, haven't we? And I think it's fine. It's a big enough world we can have different approaches. But, um, you know, yeah. So, of, of course, I was hurt. It was hurtful. I'm sure the chat's saying I'm bleeding heart now. I'm a human. I've got emotions to do just because I controlled them. I want to make the point. It is a hurtful thing. I've never had any correspondence with Twitter at all. So this has come left field. So of course uh, it's hurtful. Um, so, you know, just uh, go a little bit easy on me because one is always reflecting on these things when you've had very strong feedback that's come kind of out of the blue. That's all. Yeah. Well, the way I see it, if, I have, if I haven't if pissed someone off today, I haven't done my job. Yeah. <laughs> Tody, it sounds to me if it wasn't you she'd picked on, she'd have picked on someone else. So don't take it to heart, chap. Yeah, yeah. Q, um, Q I'm a nice guy me. underneath it all, so, no um, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. cool by me. She did come in hot for uh, Sean Hufford, though, that's what she was looking for, for Sean Hufford. Uh, when he'd gone, had he, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I see your yeah, point. And Channel Q claims that I'm, a, I'm scared of her tits. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, whatever. I, I've, oh, seen, well. I've seen more tits than she'll ever see. Um, you know, 20, almost 25 years working in strip clubs, I've seen thousands upon thousands of boobs. <laughs> so they don't scare me. <laughs> why is why well, Tony, it's a weapon? Well, Tony, I do have I do have an issue with you, and that's mm. the fact that you can't you can't admit that Channel X is your AI bot. Ah, well, that is running around. <laughs> <laughs> Guys think I'm joking about this AI bot. I'm really not. Beep. It exists. Actually. Unfortunately, Tony, I haven't got it good enough to go on here yet. Sorry, sorry. How is it that you and Channel X can be in the same show together? <coughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> Where did that come from? We don't sound alike. We don't. Oh, that's, that's like, what that's you like say. saying that's yeah. like saying that David David Tennant and Richard Hammond look alike. If you put they them do. side by side, they just they just don't. <laughs> I didn't say anything about distance. Them. To be fair, Anthony used to get me and uh, Dean muddled up, <laughs> and Dean's got quite a regional <laughs> accent. So, um, you know, I need uh, I need an opinion from from the other people here in this panel. I've got a little bottle of Prosecco here that I've been sitting. It's been sitting on my table. I've been staring at. I'm thinking about opening it. My That's favorite. It's a little about a 200 mil bottle. Should I do it? Yeah. Yeah, you're funny. One for have Can have some for me. <laughs> people after my own heart i never yeah. miss an opportunity i never miss an opportunity to encourage complete strangers to be irresponsible oh i'm yeah. not irresponsible it's not yeah. like i'm driving anywhere 
in that case, never Just mind. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. I don't think like 200 mind. mils is going to make much difference. Yeah. No, especially when I can knock off. It depends what it is. I can knock off 750. Yeah, 200 can, mils can, of botulism. Yeah, I can <laughs> knock off a 750 mil bottle of rum and not even blink. Yeah, the rum's better. Guys, so, I'm going to uh, have to get going for the day. Um, it was good talking with you all. You're really a great bunch to hang out with. Thanks, Especially Bob. me. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> yeah, Except me. Except that Bob. Tony guy. He's an asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know you don't mean that, Bob. I know you don't mean that. Touchy as I am, I'm not going to take it from you. See and you I know. hate him. <laughs> Here we go. Take care, man. It's been Bye. great. Bye. Bye, Bob. See you, Bob. Hello, Prosecco. <laughs> you didn't bring enough for everybody. Keep it to no. yourself. Yeah, it. exactly. Bye bye, bye, Princess. <laughs> Jesus, My favorite. Actually, you probably <laughs> find some more Australians will start waking up soon. Here, here's the here's a little bottle right here. Oh, thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. It's just a little bitty feller. Look at my hand in comparison to this bottle. <laughs> Look at this. They're tiny. Yeah. It's like a clang and you're done. It's he just a little it's shooter. A, he said it's a 200 mil. I bet it's only a little 50 cc ball, isn't it? <laughs> Dude, I have a 10 and a half inch hand span. <laughs> and if you want proof, I can go ahead and, and throw down a ruler and measure it for you. No, we no, believe no, it's okay. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, some pretty good hams on the ends of my arms. So yeah, I like that. You... He says he's got a 200 mil bottle, yet his hand's still in inches. Yeah. <laughs> Big Blue. Well, I... how's your how's your um poll going, Big Blue? Uh, still sitting 50-50. Oh, bug. <laughs> it's waiting on my vote. 50 <laughs> He's with a vote where he's going to be. Um, if he gets to four thousand, he's got revealed what he looks like. I've already seen what he looks like. So yeah, a few. Hey, Brainy Beaver. A beaver? Oh, I thought he's a gorilla. Oh no, is it blue you're talking about? All right, I thought you were talking about Brainy Beaver. No, I want to see it. Pip. Yeah. Go back to sleep. What's up? <laughs> I'm trolling here, leave me alone. I'm trolling. <laughs> trolling, trolling, trolling. Hey, up high, trolling. 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 <laughs> Don't kind of go over that. Uh, Maybe take a screenshot. <coughs> Talk to a bunch of northies. Goodness sake. Northies. Well, you're all north of me. Uh, I'm in South I'm Australia. Off. I, I think get he too is much further in, south. I think he's the only in Antarctica. <laughs> that is south of the equator, aren't you? Yeah. I'm in, I'm in Antarctica. I'm captain of a penguin brigade down here. Oh, what's that? You Admiral Bird? <laughs> you got it, pal. <laughs> boom, boom. Hey, I'm, in, I'm in charge said. of the uh, Guardian Penguin Forces. Yes, Admiral Bird said, Harlan's a dick. So if I was a captain on a boat and had a parrot and named it Admiral, would that be Admiral Bird? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it would be the Admiral's Bird. So if it was named Admiral, it would be... I don't know. Alan, don't go. <laughs> yeah, shills. <laughs> yeah, shills. <laughs> oh, like oh, bird. Oh, Hurt. Pie's got a, got a fan. Hurt my feelings. Both of them or just one of them? Just the one. Okay. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because you see unpaid shills um, avatar up on the screen and that comment <laughs> comes in. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I think he's in cahoots with Branty. I don't think I sound at all like her. <laughs> she has, she has a, a much more deep, resonant voice than I have. Yeah, just finish it for a second, then we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Laurie, no, anytime, are, uh, are you doing? Uh, What's Laurie doing in the chat? What is he doing? Is he being a troll? No, yeah. he's, <laughs> doing. he's he's spelling out Weight Watchers. <laughs> That is a um, pretty what? dead frog. It is definitely squished. That's a flat he's, frog. He's not. He's pining for the fjords. <laughs> he's pining for the fjords. <laughs> yeah, but can you prove that's a frog? It's just independent variable. It was a frog. The, the, the independent variable is it was alive. <laughs> oh yeah. What yeah, do we think of the of the sleeping warrior advert for a threesome? Did you what? see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't catch any of that except the word threesome. Threesome. Oh. Yeah, I think he's referring to an advert out looking for a. Yeah, that's from ten years ago. What is it? Yeah, two thousand and nine. And he's still trying to work out how to put the saddle still on. Still is, yeah. <laughs> Never even noticed it. <laughs> I mean, if somebody's looking for a threesome, if there's a midget involved, I'm game. <laughs> okay, it's Anthony Riley. <laughs> and a midget? And no midget. No, no midget. Yeah, forget no. it then. Someone done a no, lot. Forget it. Anthony Riley that. is a midget. Okay, so that no. picture of the that picture of the squished frog, it's from Shutterstock. I can imagine the photographer when he comes home to his wife and says, See, I told you someone would buy that picture. <laughs> In that case, could we please stop putting it up? <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's all. That's, that's all trash I found one day at the beach. Well, you haven't been to South Terrible. then. Yeah, I was going to say you haven't been to coast of England, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you you got a really clean beach if that's all you found. Yeah, in I a day for fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. You wouldn't better walk on our beach for fifteen minutes. <laughs> that's terrible. Every time I go to the beach, I always find, I always pick up the trash. Oh yeah, Ooh, that's cool, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, who, you, who you calling trash? <laughs> Who pulled them stones yeah, this, is, this is this is why this is why I like uh, picking up the trash at the beach because it's absolutely beautiful there. Uh, hey, that's cool. It's beachy keen. Yeah, keen. <laughs> yeah, beach. Hang on a minute. That whole uh, yeah thing was started years ago by, by me and an old friend. Um, yeah. God, it must have been must have been thirty years ago. We started doing that just just for the laughs. And uh, about four years ago, he was shot to death. He uh, he was killed oh. by his own damn brother. There you go. <laughs> oh my God, that's gorgeous. That's the great mm. Australian bot. It's beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And it debunks flat earth too. Yeah. I see a curve. The horizon doesn't rise to eye level on one side of the photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you got a short guy the other side of you. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah. Pete Harrington on the other side of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with that. Yeah. 
Yeah, you stand yeah. next to a midget and the horizon slant. <laughs> That's yeah, what you get a step. step in the horizon. <laughs> Everything starts sliding to the left. And I've, I've <laughs> got a picture. I've got a picture that Alan might like. Where is it? Is that where we get mud slides? That one. Oh. Hey, submarine. That's, that's the HMAS ovens. It's a big old propane tank. <laughs> HMAS what? Ovens. O V E N S. Oh. It's like not a really good name. For it. In. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, being stuck in a, a sealed vessel called the ovens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be uh pretty hard to bury. <laughs> 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 Lulu, Lu. Ken's still at it. What's Ken doing? Ken being Ken. Yeah, leaving his mic open. No, you can't be muted. Oh no. Is it me? No. Yes. No. <laughs> Maybe. Possible. No. 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 <laughs> no. 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 I like the picture of the mirror. That's quite cool. Where's the rest of the yeah, car? Dude. Uh, That's cool. yeah, I was just there. running around. I was running down the road with the mirror in my hand. So, oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I rent the rest no, of the car. Uh, there, there's a there's a layer of fog uh, that that that's no. in that picture. He's called Ether Band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And, and actually, actually, I described this to Travis last night. I said this is this is a localized event. Because there's no fog on the road, there's no fog on the other side, but there's fog down here. I said, this is, this, you know, this is a localized atmosphere. And I said, uh, you know, and I, I explained to him that, that when he's taking pictures of long distances, yeah, it could be clear where you're at, but over two miles away, you could have a layer of whatever in the way. So, you know, it just kind of proved my point on uh, what he, what he, was describing as an ether band was really probably localized atmosphere. The ether band. Yep. It's just atmospheric <laughs> conditions. That's it. Just call it yep. what it is. Yep. Yeah. Um, page shows you and I are on the same page there. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let him suck a fat one. Yeah. I'm not going to let him get away with trying to obfuscate <laughs> reality by making up bullshit terms just to confuse and muddy the waters. You just wanted to use the word obfuscate. <laughs> Everybody else is doing it. Why can't I? Because <laughs> is it uh, uh, imperial indicative evidence of like? No, it's Earth? empirical and exclusively <laughs> indicative. Oh, that thing you say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, Give it's me in, one piece of empirical and exclusively indicative evidence of a flat Earth. No, you I can't. can't. Do it. Yeah, evidence. Yeah, yeah. Earth. <laughs> yeah, can't. You guys sound like you're turning into Beavis and Butthead now. Yeah, yeah bacon. <laughs> Taco, <laughs> Taco's <laughs> rule. <laughs> Taco <laughs> Bell. Ether Bell rules. Yeah. Who said <laughs> that? This is Angel <laughs> of Attack. I just joined on to this. Ether, Ether Man rules. So I can talk to you guys. Uh, really... Well, yeah. I'd like I'd like a topic to discuss, or uh, get a get someone in here with a contrary view, and let's let's talk about it. <laughs> Last one we had in here got kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? P Mars. Ali. It was Ali. Oh, Ali. Ali. Uh, no, P Mars got, got kicked after Ali. God, mighty. Yeah. Where Ali do? Yeah. Ali was being Bye. obtuse. And I won't have to pay my no, 
Ellie's always obtuse. Yeah, that's we're all he talking is. about alien possibility of aliens, you know, existing in the solar system. Any like think bacteria. Ellie, I really <laughs> think Ellie is proof that there's the possibility of aliens. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like in the Men in Black movies when they show you on the screen who actually is an alien, like Oprah and people like that. Ali B is definitely one. <laughs> yeah, but not better, Dennis Rodman. Be, You're better better right. Be <laughs> but he's not. But he's not alien. He's just Glaswegian. I think you'd see the tail hanging out at the bottom of his shorts. Pardon me. <laughs> That's not his tail, Blue. That's not his tail. Yes, Pip. <laughs> You're not, you're not Glaswegian, are you? Hey, it's not you alien, it's Glaswegian. Well, no, I'm near enough, though. Near enough. <laughs> near enough. You're miles from Glasgow. 50. So on, the, on this picture, on this picture, oh, yeah. is, that, is that island over on the right-hand side, is that floating over top of the water? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? Why That's is it amazing. Better? Look at that. It, make it stop. That, it shouldn't That's be. That's the Craig. Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't raised to eye level. The, the infamous Elsa Craig. That must be CGI. Mm -hmm. That must be CGI. <laughs> Maybe they raise it out of the water so ships can go underneath. Ah, oh, oh, ah, yeah. guys. Straighter you know, path. You know what CGI stands for? What's that? A clearly great image. <laughs> <laughs> the top of it's missing there. Oh, it's the eighth band. <laughs> but you can see Riley having his threesome look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not the ether band, that's like an ether he did, soprano. He did say that they liked horses. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. They lowered, they lowered it. They lowered it so that so the plane can fly over top of it. No, <laughs> this is all explainable. <laughs> that is explainable. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no. Alan, did you see what uh, Al Kay says in the chat? Careful, you're not that far away. <laughs> he is Glaswegian. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and, and, I'm a, uh, uh, and I'm terribly afraid of Glaswegians. <laughs> I've, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough small, short, angry Glaswegians as drill instructors and weapons <laughs> instructors during my service in the RAF to oh. not really be that too bothered. Oh, and having the. Um, Seeming to attract drunken Glaswegians like a magnet on the London Underground on a Friday night while travelling home. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say they're easy to deal with. You just throw a six pack off to the left, and you just make a dodge to the right, and you're you're clear. <coughs> I wouldn't get rid of a six pack that easy. No. <laughs> um, yeah, you usually, that? usually, you just have to toss one it's one bottle of special brew, and you're okay. Yeah, watch them fight over. Yeah, yeah. thousands of them. <laughs> uh, what's Mister Forget on a on a belt? What's the unlight? What the fuck? Uh, you had too many magic mushrooms, mate. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, pass, I'll pass. I'll pass the. I'll, there, 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 there. I'll paste the link again. <laughs> 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 That's all, folks. What colour was that? <laughs> join Link for Etienne if he would like to come and join us. Oh. Of course he won't. Just Mr. Rainbow. <clears throat> Just a oh, bunch of kids laughing at truth because they don't understand. What, humour? Kids. <sighs> Holy who's shit, who's saying this? I got a grandson at university. <laughs> kids, yeah, right, kids. There's not a damn kid uh, in here. Uh, uh, we mentioned Flat bad. Earth in the last 10 minutes. That's quite another um, bit called a kid. We joked about it. Actually, okay, 
I can't remember the comment I left ages ago on his video on your video because with my memory issues I don't really remember what I said five minutes ago. Yeah, you told us that about twenty minutes ago, you know. I have I have a similar sort of issue actually. So I actually have a collection of, uh, of like car magazines and I, I keep them in a box and then periodically get them out and read them again for the first time. <laughs> Didn't you say you got a box of car <laughs> magazines that you get out every now and again to read? Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, I usually, that's what I usually say is, uh, yeah, under the bed I've got a box with, with, with men's magazines. Yeah, car and driver, top gear. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just say that you can get, you've got a box of magazines under your bed that you get out every now and again to read? <laughs> Stop yes. it. <laughs> yes, Stop and it. I read them because I have such a poor memory. I can, I can keep them under there. And then actually, uh, I was just thinking about that. Generally, what happens is I'll discover a box under the bed with magazines in them because I forgot to put them there. If marijuana, if marijuana makes you forget, what does marijuana do? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Actually, an advantage to that, you know, or at least I think it is. I don't I mind told, the memory loss. I, I told get to my make wife, new friends every day. Yeah, I, I tell my wife. <laughs> and you can hide your own Easter eggs. That's right. You know, the number of times I've introduced friends to other friends, and they'll say, you know, that's the third time you've introduced us. <laughs> just <laughs> making sure. Then I, sometimes spliff. I'll just say, ha, 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 just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you got another split. Yeah. I told my, I, actually, I told my wife that um, if I ever get Alzheimer's, she won't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I had uh, until I had it's an way ex. too late. I had an ex. I'd tell her a joke, and she wouldn't laugh. She'd just look at me, and she'd say six. <laughs> That's and that being the number of times I'd told her the damn same joke. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> but she just totally deadpan me and just tell me, you know, five, you know, eight. Oh, yeah, me and my sure. buddies at the bar, we just got, we, we just, we finally numbered our jokes. Just, it saves a lot of time. You don't have to go through all that shit. <laughs> have you heard this one? Which just one? Oh, number, number five. 12. Number <laughs> Apparently, um, forget think, seems to think that we have the lack of ability to question what we already know. Um, right. All right. I'll tell you what, bring me one piece of empirically, empirical and exclusively indicative evidence of a flat earth. I'll listen to it. Just one. That's bunker. all I ask for. Yeah, that's what we all say. Yeah. Yeah, you better have data to back up that claim too. <clears throat> there was something uh, said earlier here that I have to really agree with Blue on. And that's having to do with uh, these terms. Uh, I've been hearing things lately like ether band and uh, this uh, eye convergence. I, I heard that the other day. I think it was Travis. And I was really appalled at Barney and a few others as how they sit and listen to this stuff. And you should be stopping them dead in their tracks and saying, look, you know, these are not terms of physics or engineering. You're just making shit up. Uh, explain to us what you mean. I mean, now this is entering into the vernacular. Now people are talking about ether banding and convergence of the eye, and it's just bullshit. I mean, it's meaningless terms that somebody's made up, and you just need to stop these idiots from repeating this nonsense. And that's well, that's what that's, I'm on about. Well, there, there's another there's another point uh, parts that the convergence of the eye is is a it's a term in um, in the art world. Uh, Flat Earth Data brought that up and hung himself immediately. But you know, but my whole point is to let him get his information out rather than no, no, just than, stop him and tell him oh, no, define no, what no, you no, mean. Here's the, the, this is the problem though he is he's going to hang himself no matter what. I'll let him have that rope all day long, and then just go back to the very first part and say, okay, let's read this sentence. On your information, this is what your info. This is what you say, and you know, and it completely derails them 
when 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 you let them get, go through their information and they think they've won and then you you point out the very first thing in the very beginning you know it, it kind of takes the wind out of their sails like oh yeah shit, that was well i tend to thing. Be, i tend to get disagree with that because the more you let them use the term people in the chat pick it up and casual listeners come in they start thinking maybe it's a real term you know but the convergence of the eye that that was it, it's actually uh it, it's gotten rid of now uh but that was that was an old term from way back when yeah um, but it's not a term of physics or engineering no no but it is it, it, it was used for uh perspective it was used for for uh, well then as, describe it using the proper words don't don't make shit up you know <laughs> yeah, well, but it's not making it up. It's using. Oh, it, it is wrong, by googling convergence of the eye, and uh, that, yeah, exactly. that it's meaningless. But it's it's used it's used in the wrong in the wrong field. Uh, you know, he was bringing up an architectural book. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's just like really uh, Arwen Arwen talking about uh, disequilibrium. That's not a term used in physics or engineering. That's a term that comes from economics, and that's the only place that I've ever seen disequilibrium used. It's talking about um, uh, differences of uh, economic uh, uh, conditions, and it has nothing to do with engineering science. Yeah, it comes up in finance and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The only time when you talk about disequilibrium, that you'll never find a science book, engineering book that um, ever mentions anything about yeah. disequilibrium. If you want to talk about unbalance of forces, then say it's forces are unbalanced or the system is unbalanced. You just don't you don't say it's under disequilibrium. Well, that's ether band, right. ether band. I'm going to continue to stop it dead in its tracks every time it's brought mm -hmm. up. I'm gonna halt that shit because that's yeah. It's I, I, I ain't letting that fly. Yeah, no, I feel it, yeah. I feel the uh, same way when it comes to getting down in the weeds, arguing with them about perspective and everything like that. It's like we need to hold their feet to the fire. Like, what about the thousands and thousands of photos and videos from space that you cannot debunk? You know, don't even bother getting down into that muck where they've got their little talking points. It's a similar uh, kind of thing. To me. You're right. You're right about that. And George, I went, I've gone through two, my, my two remaining thermodynamics texts from college that I keep around and not one place in either one of them. Can I find the word container ever used? We talk, they talk about open and closed and isolated systems, but never containers. Yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, that's another thing that me. comes from the quantum eraser, Nathan, uh, nonsense, you know, shit yeah. show over there. Yeah, if they want to talk about this stuff, I really fully believe we ought to, they, they ought to be held to uh, accountable to at least use the proper terminology. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, they're, they're always invoking science and scientific uh, method or whatever that, you know, under their definitions. Well, then, all right, if you want to talk science and use scientific terms, don't make shit up. Yep. Yep. Well, they only want to say relative density because specific gravity uses the word gravity. Anything to avoid using that word. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the point I was, I was trying to make was they weren't um, like flat earth data was trying to bring up the point of perspective and was attempting to use a term that wasn't wasn't used anymore because it really didn't matter uh you know what the convergence of the eye was uh when it came to architecture uh they, they had to take into account a lot more things you know the perspective of what you're looking at uh the observer everything um and, and but no, i see where you're his, coming from but my point is is flat earth data is an idiot to begin with and to give them any sort of traction uh just certainly okay. well what i found disingenuous what i found disingenuous on his part was he was trying to quote from this book that was probably hand copied by gregorian monks about about architecture this thing was old it was outdated 
it, it was using terminology that's not used anymore. And architecture has absolutely nothing to do with geology. All right, but but the the other thing, and this kind of goes along with with um, how Tody uh, 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 approaches people, is if if we're going to ask for time to to present our side, then we should do the same for them. I don't like I don't like when people just start jumping in half uh, half sentence because I find it I find it uh, you know I find that you're not trying to help someone understand at that point. You're just trying to win, and I think that that hurts on both sides. Either you know, no matter what argument you, you're trying to get out, it just hurts your argument. I, I see your point. I, I mostly agree with it. Uh, there's a part of me that doesn't, but yeah, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, most of these guys are sitting at their computer in front of a webcam and a mic or a headset they have their folders in front of them with all their shit yet they can't organize to get a single argument out and that's what i have a problem with you see them go into these debates where they've been asked a week in advance to get their shit together and all they do is come in and spiel off the eric debate shit or they do what these I come Travis. into these with absolutely no no information other than what I have in my head, because I'm an idiot like that, and I like the abuse, I guess. But you know, <laughs> but you remember the other day when Travis was on, you know, and you know how he talks, and he was touting his big presentation he was going to make and be there tomorrow at ten, and you know, doing all of his bravado, and then the next day he said, "No, I'm not going to do it," you know. Hey, I'm going to destroy the globe. Yeah. Yeah, right, they, right. They, they but, but you know, but if he if he had presented, I would have gave him all props and let him get get it all out. Absolutely. And you know, I was looking forward to it. You know, see what exactly mm -hmm. his thing is. You know, yeah. right. But if it, you know, and I th I I think you know, like after watching um a couple of MC tunes where where he he slowly destroys them and allows them to to choke themselves basically um you know i'm like wow he's he he's totally destroying them and 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 they just think he's the best thing the best thing since sliced bread hmm. it's a peculiar peculiar thing that we deal with every day isn't it talking to these people <laughs> it's a strange little hobby it is Someone's got Funny, epic bagels. Strange. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'd just say someone's got to educate them. Right. We try, you know, and, and you know, you try to try yeah. to get the ones that aren't too far gone, like that uh, that one woman that was in Jose's last Friday. Uh, you could tell she was a mom. She had some kids with her. She seemed like she wasn't too far into it. Like she just discovered a couple of flat Earth videos, and it's like if we can get through to her, or or all those people that. Uh, aren't taking part but are listening in you know i have to that, see yeah, yeah exactly yeah um gentlemen i am actually gonna have to bow out i'll be listening it's been great fun i can't contribute so i have to i have to suck the boogie being a great chat thanks a lot guys have a good one Bye, and if you already yeah. and if you already have a good one have a bigger one thank you <laughs> <laughs> see you later bye, bye. bye. I actually came on just because I, uh, when Toadie was on and he was feeling bad about uh, Twitwit giving him the what for, is like, he's one of the best ones on these panels. You know, he's so measured, he's so knowledgeable, and I think that gets to them. You know, somebody that yeah. does have that sort of control and doesn't just fall apart, so they can easily pick apart his personality because he flew off the handle. I think it really gets to him. I the am people that always, don't like him. I am always really happy when he comes on the panel on my after shows. He's because I know Great. that I'm going to get intelligent, cogent arguments from him, and he's not going to lose his rag, which makes for an even yeah, better exactly. conversation. I mean, I, he's a great I, example of what we should admit, all try I, to strive for. I do sometimes lose my rag, and it gets, a, you know, and it's a bit difficult, and it's something I'm really trying to roll back on while I'm being the host. 
Unintelligent yeah. people are, are more scared of intelligent people <clears throat> than they are of bullies. Good point. Luke. Yeah, the only thing I would say, say to Toadie, and if you're listening, Toadie, I think you naively believe that you're going to win these arguments with these people by presenting them with the facts. And I've been trying it for the last six, eight months now. You can't do it. They're just going to revert to the nuh uh mode and tomorrow morning you'll hear the same bullshit from them so yep don't be disappointed don't don't be disappointed yeah. when it doesn't work because i can assure you it's not going to work but it's fun it is fun though yeah mostly there are times where oh it's shields Shut oh, up. bite me <laughs> no you'd enjoy it um no, yeah, blue's, yeah, yeah. Blue's, blue's got it right though because i've i've been in this since like last november Okay, it, it piqued my interest probably 12 months ago. And then November, I started started watching it, getting into it, um, seeing Godless Engineer, Team Skeptic, Fight the Flat Earth, Non Sequitur Show, and uh, even Cool Hard Logic and Professor Stick. And then I went, well, these guys are fucking mad to seriously think they believe something that was like dropped 200 years ago. And that they've brought it back. And then I looked into it. Oh, okay, so it started up five years ago. Okay. And then I got to a point where I went, oh, I'll drop my hat in the ring. And um, now I'm in this position where I'm, I'm forever on these chats with either Sean G, Jose, with the Aussie Perspective, with Alan. Um, but it's, it's where I've found myself in the YouTube community. Ditto, ditto. I'm and just here for the train wreck. Yeah, well, it is a good train wreck. That's what I enjoy is is watching the 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 stupid of flat earth fall flat on its face every week. And I'm here for the people that are on the fence that have not yet committed. That's that's who I'm here for. Yeah, yeah I'm and, sure and that... we are turning people. And and that's kind of that's kind of why I uh, you know I, like I said I like Toadie's approach for that is because those people on the fence they see people on both sides getting angry and you know uh, personal attacks and things like that and those people on the fence are like well why would I why would I believe anything that this person says because they you know all they're doing is a personal attack on somebody you know. Even in their own, even in the, the globe side, you know, you have personal attacks between each one uh, or, or, you know, attacking the person on the other side. You know, at that point, why are you going to, you know, why are you going to believe something that, that someone is saying? Yeah, it's always better to take the high route. No, I prefer the roundabout. <laughs> Does, does somebody would somebody like to explain to um, Etienne forget exactly how rainbows are formed? How what? Rainbows are formed. So right. you know, I'm on the panel and I'll because, explain it again. Because um, he's just written a reply to RT96. Even if light was instant, it's still impossible for light to enter moving droplets of water and then reunite to form a fixed 2D reflection of the spectrum of colours. Oh, no. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> sounds like uh, Etienne made something up that sounded good to him or her. Doesn't yeah, he, know uh, how atmospheric that. conditions hold water? No, no, no. I, I, I'm thinking of actually, yeah. You know, Water vapor. How the, um, yeah, you know, the fact that uh, the the light is be, um, <laughs> and the light can enter no, a bunch Alan, of water. Yeah. It can in, and does. In uh, rainbows, Alan, what happens is you have droplets of water. And light enters and it reflects internally off several surfaces and then reemerges, much like a prism, you know, where the light gets separated. Yeah. But the thing is, the colors are scattered everywhere. 
in all directions, but yes. it's entering your eye from one specific direction. I mean, that's why when you move around, you, you can still see the rainbow. The, these colors are getting scattered everywhere, but you're only seeing one specific group as you're uh, looking in the direction of the water droplets from which the light is emerging. In, so, the, in the center of a rainbow is basically a shadow of your head. Right. And it comes back at you, if I remember right, at like 84 degrees. So if you if you measure the angle from one side of a rainbow to the other, if it's a full rainbow, you'll see an 84 degree angle there. Um, that's not that doesn't hold for double rainbows. Those those are going through another round of refraction and, and whatnot. So that that breaks the 84 degree rule. But uh, but a standard rainbow, 84 degrees. Shadow yeah, the, of your head is in the middle. Yeah, the angle has to do with the uh, index of refraction of the medium that the uh, the uh, what that the light is in. Water has a large index of refraction, it's like one point three five, and it gives you that angle. Uh, if if it was glass beads up there, you'd have a much different angle. So what you're saying is it's coming through your personal atmospheric dome. Yeah, just like the sun, you know, your personal sun, sure. Yeah, yeah, it shows itself exactly to you the way it's supposed to. Gotcha. There you go, Etienne. Right. There's your answer. Yeah, the personal Atmo Illuminati Rothschild dome. Build a burger. Build a bear. <laughs> no, I prefer a burger. Yeah, build, build, a, build a burger. Bohemian it's Grove. a really rare atmospheric condition. We call it the rainbow sphere. But double rainbows, what do they even mean? Uh, it means double stars. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, that's an old reference. It means you got too many goddamn leprechauns. That's what it means. <laughs> you never have too many. <laughs> or you're very rich. You have two pots of gold. Yeah, you got dueling leprechauns going on <laughs> does that mean little banjos play yeah the dueling leprechauns dueling midgets i'm there dude <laughs> damn what was, that? What, was, what was that movie Burnolds, they went deliverance. deliverance. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no deliverance uh, references. Too late is now a panel Damn. four. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Dirty troll. Panel squatters, terrible. Piss off. <laughs> You're a panel you squatter, Pip. Pip. Yeah, it was some to yeah, it, but up this afternoon she called us panel whores. Well, you know, somebody doesn't like it. Why don't they drag their flat ass in here and replace us? You know, take up a spot that we can't take. Bring bring some empirical and exclusively indicative evidence with you. The well, thing is, Twitter, Twitter's not a flat. Twitter's not a flat. No, she's just someone who's got a fucking rose stuck up a twat. Well, there's a quadruple she rainbow. Hate, she hates the world, man. Oh, she's angry. Oh, quadruple. She is. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know. She's like the female Tim Osmond, and he's pretty antisocial these days. Yeah. He's got some good, you know, observations, some fantastic stuff. I completely agree with. I'm glad that this sometimes goes a little beyond. He's been very quiet these last few months, or weeks, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Who, kind of who like. Has? Tim Osmond. Tim Osmond. Tim Osmond. I think I don't think he's Tim recovered Osmond? since he lost. Yeah, since he lost his his channel a while back, I don't think he's quite. I think that kind of soured him on the whole thing. Well, that's what happens when you're a dick. <laughs> what do you do? You're right. Some what did he do? do? He was Tim Somebody. Osmond. <laughs> Somebody did some sort of, I don't even know what they did, but they got his channel shut down. I think he was claiming it was fight the flat earth, but you know, who knows? Who knows? But it got deleted. Hmm. Um, 
something you need to keep in mind um, regarding uh, Twit. You know, she's been on the scene a long time and she's become cynical and jaded much like uh, Aquartis and I have. I just tend not to be quite as vocal as the others regarding it. I mean, she's come to the conclusion and many of us have that it's just totally ridiculous and useless to try to even talk with these people. I mean, we're always having certain uh, people come in that are new to the scene. They think they have some new spin that the uh, flat earthers are gonna reason with, uh, some new approach to uh, present to the flat earthers where they're gonna have an aha moment and see where they're wrong. George, <laughs> you could say the same happen. thing between atheists and theists. Right. Yeah, it's never yeah. going to happen. I mean, these people are never going to see the light. They don't want to see the light. And yeah, there's always someone new coming along to crack it at the creationists and whatnot. Right, yeah. They think they have some way of reaching them that the rest of us have never thought of before. <laughs> yeah, but they're welcome to try. That's the thing. Well, I, see, that's where I differ is I... I I just don't try to argue with these people at all because all it does is it kind of lifts them to a point of almost seeming legitimate and none of their arguments are legitimate and they're not legitimate. And when you engage them, you're kind of giving them a, a sense of legitimacy. Yeah, it's but just my personal it? feeling on it. <laughs> All right, yeah, thanks for a nice chat, guys. If you, if you become that cynical and that, that, that angry towards people about it, then maybe it's time to step away because it, obviously it's affecting how, your outlook on people. Yeah, it could tend to make you, uh, you know, kind of kind of feel uh, a little hopeless when it comes to some people, you know? You want to you want to think the best. You want to think that everybody is kind of learning more and growing, but then it becomes obvious that many don't. Yeah, but that 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 shows a vulnerability on your side if you become cynical over a subject like this. Yeah, if you let it get to you. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that too. All right, I got to take off. Thanks for the chat, y'all. Yeah. Cheers, see buddy. You. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. 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 Depends how you approach it, too. If you take this seriously, which you shouldn't, uh, I, I see it as a joke and a point of amusement, and that's about it. Mm. Yeah, I, I see it on two fronts, okay? There's, there's, there's the stupid of it and the silly of it, but there's also the fact that you, you need to throw out a little bit of education to people who aren't flat earthers <laughs> but don't understand certain things about the globe. Which is the better approach. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, uh, that's that's one of the one of the things about it is, you know, I, I have re-educated myself a little bit as to what's going on in the world and you know and I'm pulling things out of my brain that I have totally forgotten since high school. Oh. You know? Down my sleeping. And it's not me this I'm... time. <laughs> I'm dealing with uh dealing oh, with boy. painful foot issue right now. <laughs> there we go. It was it. <laughs> Who is guilty this time? That was, I'm laughing at Ken holding up a sign saying don't give them oxygen. <laughs> it was um, thou, Mad B. Oh, it's Mad B. Or, or anti smeg alien, as he's currently known. Oh, look, <laughs> rainbows. Yeah, cool. Look at that shit bouncing all around in there. Who's got the TV uh, on in the background? Um, not guilty. At the end of the day, what's important is not the shape of our world, but the importance of respecting God that created us and everything.
Uh, um, you got to believe it in God first. Yeah, no. I don't believe in God. I lost my faith. Yeah, sorry. And it's gone. My parents made me, not God. Oh. Well, you know, that's okay. I mean, if, for those that want to have faith, where I get angry is when you get guys like Lemonbird that come in, start preaching, tell me how I'm, uh, I'm so sinful, I'm going to go to hell and I need to repent. That's where I draw the line. Yeah, don't, don't, don't preach your crap in a scientific field. Religion. Well, the thing Religion. Is, is, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to have fun before I get there. Yep. Religion is like a penis. If you have one, great, wonderful, enjoy it, do fun things with it. But if you take it out in public, you try and ram it down somebody's throat, you got to be held accountable for that. Yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> see blue where some of these um religious types come from is they feel it's their duty to save us you know and they're going to do all they can to try to save yeah, you. I'm, that that, that gets be annoying saved. fast but yeah, they need I'm, to be I'm from, saved i'm from texas which is the buckle of the bible belt it's a oh boy it's a real treat on sundays Texas is uh... oh. but you can have your face you can have it all you want but keep it to your fucking self yep I no, won't attack religious. you for it but if you bring it in as an argument I will because religion oh, doesn't simple. belong in science the simple fact of the matter is there is nothing in the Bible that is even remotely scientific that's correct. Each and every time it's been shot down, each and every time some new scientific fact is brought up. Oh, it in was the in the Bible. Yeah. Apparently, DNA was in the Bible. They didn't even know what germs were. Yeah, and if uh, two cows did it in front of a striped stick and made a calf, it would be striped. That's how yeah. genetics works. Yeah, and that's how you got zebras. You know, that they're the 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 well, they're of the same kind. They've got four legs. <laughs> Yes, but are elephants and pine trees of the same kind? They are, thank you to um, our genetics. <gasps> we all came from one frickin' single-celled organism. Just took one, and it made everything. Yep. <laughs> That was one busy little bastard, wasn't it? <laughs> it sure one of the... was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, of the best, um, one of the best anecdotes uh, of the week for me has been is somebody um, told Arwen, um, they, they were, on Arwen's, I guess they were discussing uh, cool moonlight and somebody told Arwen that he could freeze ants with a magnifying glass uh, during a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's glorious. Hope he films on your P900. He was around in the chat earlier, but unfortunately he wouldn't come on, would he? No. Um, Pip even put the link in for him and he wouldn't come in. Yeah, and I put the link in for him. Mm. That one was almost as good as over a year ago. Stiggy once told me as uh, in chat that um, <clears throat> that if there truly was the vacuum of space, the Earth's atmosphere would have been sucked out by now through the hole in the ozone. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Next topic. <laughs> I mean, we we should probably start putting a lot of these together in a book. Are there anecdotes? Yeah. Flat Earth fantasies. <laughs> So it is. I'm missing half the chat. I've got a thing No, you aren't supposed to spill it on the ground. <laughs> oh, bloody camera on again. Pip, are you trying to scare everyone? There we go. No, I stuck a plaster over it. <laughs> I kept hitting and then the, the one that I week. think the one that I think tops it all, but this isn't flat earth related. This had to do with uh, 9-11 Pete Shea uh. told me that uh, they actually lowered the twin towers uh, via an elevator down into a cavern inside the earth so that they could dismantle them. Pete Shea can gargle my fuzzy engine balls. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, seriously, who's his dealer? Because I think he's getting some bad juju. Uh, yeah, but you have to remember, there are very few. There are, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, you, you see the um, building with the aerial on that is in my um, avatar? The the the, yep. the dish the that that reflector on that dish is sixty feet across. Uh, we once convinced a couple of radar operators, we as in the engineering section, once convinced a couple a couple of radar operators that um, the the siren they heard and the slight vibration of the building was the building being being withdrawn underground on the hydraulic rams just like in the tv series stingray and we said and because we told them because the buildings had to go underground you can't leave so you just better go and sit in our crew room and we left them there for two hours before we got a phone call from the operators saying where are our scopies um send them back now or else <laughs> Because they, yeah, I was, because, they were, because they were, they had been expected back in the ops building two hours previously. Yeah, I would have, uh, both of you, I would have said, yeah, go, go ahead and go back to class if I had thought for a moment that things were going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> But I should have known better. Dinosaurs are cool. Yep. Yeah. Show sure enough. Are cool or were cool? Who are what? Well, uh, they still are. Yeah, I was, I was, I was just, I was just there, there, double checking. Yeah, I, I see them flying around all every day. Yep, still are. Yeah. What? Yeah, two in the other room. What, your children or actual dinosaurs? Dinosaur. Uh, look here for children. Who's a who, 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 who? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Is it who or what? Am I which one where? Yeah, where? Yeah, what? I'm well, at least that, see him through the ether band. I was gonna say at least it wasn't a Norwegian <laughs> blue. <laughs> African grey. 
I'd love to have a lyrebird for a pet. That'd be awesome. A lyrebird? Yeah. Oh, you have to come down here and get one. And it'll mimic car alarms, crows, Christmas lights. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even though they spell it L Y R E. Uh, hang on, I gotta mute for a minute. I, I'm I'm getting a blip of pain here. Okay. Yeah, I I bet it was a gut pain too. <laughs> no, it's in my legs. I've had open wounds on my legs for 14 years, and it I feels didn't like do I'm it. Being it constantly wasn't my... stabbed. <laughs> By uh, by red hot ice picks, and it hurts like not hell. my fault. You keep stabbing yourself in the leg. No, most of the problem is I have shitty circulation on. Yes, the, I, I know. I body. know your story. <sighs> Silly old man. This one is where I got my um, username from. <coughs> <laughs> He's a pianist parrot, so that's why I got pie parrot. Useless information, thought you'd like to know. Well, you are a dinosaur, aren't you, Pip? Well, getting there. So what's let's, going on let's in the get YouTube? A topic to, yeah, let's let's get a topic to talk about. That'll get my mind off of things. Mm, I'm leaving. I got stuff to do. Okay. Okay. okay good night, Blue. Uh -huh. Bye, Blue. Fine then. Be that way. Thanks yeah, for joining in. Got, yeah, you guys take care. Had fun. Bye, Blue. I'll see you tomorrow, you probably. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Well, I'll be there. I'm a panel well. whore. <laughs> oh, that's right. Panel whore. Yep, I'll yeah, be there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a uh, maybe. I'll be a panel squatter or whatever the panel, <laughs> whatever, whatever that thing was. Um, uh. just just the thing. Hey, Blue, I got a got a possible idea for a video for you. If you're still here. And I think he's gone. Okay. He's mind. gone. Too late. Hey, uh, Alan, when you uh, up worked on these uh, radars, uh, what what frequency did they operate at? That one ran. Uh, it, was actually spread, it was a spread spectrum system, and it oh, really? ran. Yeah, it 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 ran across a five hundred megawatt. 500 megahertz bandwidth centered at okay. 3 gigahertz and um, we had uh, frequency agility and frequency diversity on um, each transmitted pulse oh, that's interesting I didn't know that they uh, used spread spectrum with, with, with some of this stuff it, was it uh, to try to remain stealth then, so that the uh, enemy didn't was, know they were being scammed? What happened in the in the nineteen fifties? A you know, town something. No. <laughs> You're not talking to retards again. What happened to Alan? Sorry, sorry, my daughter was speaking to me. And oh. um how dare she interrupt you? Yeah, it didn't go well. But then you know. <laughs> um yeah, sorry, the the, the the problem was in the nineteen fifties um the French invented a thing called a carcinotron, which um allowed um, very high energy impulses to be um, transmitted across a relatively wide frequency band. So the whole idea was to um, make them have to spread the jamming as far as possible. Um, 
so yeah so it had four it had four frequency bands that had um that, that were um on 60 megahertz bandwidth and um each it, it sorry say so there was four frequency bands of 100 megahertz and within that there were 60 you had 60 megahertz um bandwidth but you could um set it to any one of four different center frequencies in the 100 megahertz so um, rather than trying to be stealth it was more for uh, anti-jamming them it was for anti-jamming and also for the fact that yeah and uh, the other the other thing we did was that um there were 12 transmitters at um five megawatts peak power each so we could um so we could throw an awful lot of power out there to um over you know to, to overcome the jamming by yeah. um burning yeah. through it as well um yeah. Yeah, y'all could light up christmas trees at 50 kilometers <laughs> yeah, some, and here all along like that. and here all along i thought the carcinotron was something to uh, remotely induce cancer in people i was gonna make that joke <laughs> yeah Yeah, it was a it was a big old beast to get that much. Um, oh yeah, out of it. I would love to see the uh, transmitter tubes. Oh, I'll show you a picture of the transmitter tube. Hang on, I have. Imagine there are some pretty decent sized jugs. Uh, I think it's is it. Uh, It's in, it's in that folder. Uh, let me just get to that. And There we go. One transmitter cholesterol. Oh my! Yeah. Holy <laughs> sheep shit! <laughs> it's about seven feet tall, and yeah, the connectors down the connectors in the box at the, the it's standing with its back against the wall to the right. So we are looking at its right hand side. The uh, panel at the bottom right is indeed the connectors for the water and oil cooling because it was water cooled. But that will put that would push out um, five megawatts peak power. Um, a, it, each transmitter was driven by a 91 kVA motor generator set feeding an EHT cabinet which at full power was pushing out 12 kV at about 6 amps with about oh, 5 with, 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 a, with about 500 millivolts of ripple on the oh, 12 kV DC uh, which was then fed to a pulse forming network, which formed 10 microsecond pulses at two. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Back up, back up, back up. 12 kV with about five millivolts of ripple. 500 millivolts of ripple. Oh, 500. Well, even then. Still, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to yeah. say yeah, that. Half, <laughs> half a volt and ripple at 12 kV. It Imagine the size of the caps on that bitch. <laughs> yeah, they were they were pretty big. 
Uh, and uh, it was a, not a very pleasant job the night I had to replace one because the uh, damn thing had split. Because they were all filled with polychlorinated biphenyl. Yep, yep. <laughs> Black um, sticky tar everywhere. Well, yeah, um, it's carcinogenic. And uh, when yep. you incinerate it correctly, you are left with dioxin. Yep. And the PCBs yeah, worse than those. the dioxin. <laughs> it's yep, really horrid. Boys. It's really hard. you have to you have to wear a full plastic oversuit, face mask, forced air breathing apparatus, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the twelve kV goes to a pulse forming network that forms uh, ten microsecond wide pulses at a pulse repetition frequency of two hundred and fifty hertz. Uh, then that goes into the final pulse transformer to hit the um, cathode, which is at the top, in the, it's in the tin can at the top. Uh, and the cathode is the, the cathode voltage is, if I remember rightly, about 110, 120 kV at about 100 amps. Fuck. Well, you see the plastic, you see the plastic um, cover over the entranceway. That's where yeah, the yeah. Um, that's where the holy shit. That's that's where the that's where the connector sits. So that's the diameter yeah. of the of the connector. Okay, and then that whole top can is filled with transformer oil. Yeah, I can I can only imagine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't imagine RF energy in the ampere range, let alone 100 amps. <laughs> well, that's not RF. That's actually just a DC pulse. That's the that, that's okay. the um, that's that's what you hit the cathode. It's it's a negative voltage, and you're hitting it hitting the cathode with it. Um, but uh, with the, what, what's with the impedance the, with the what's anode? the impedance of the RF transmission lines then that go to the antenna? Uh, Is it like 50, they're, 75, 90 ohms, or? No, they're waveguide. Oh, okay. It's, it, it, it's, it's waveguide pressurized at 48 PSI. Okay. Gotcha. Just to um, just to help reduce the chances of arc over a bit. Sure. Um, Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. It's it, because uh, because underneath the aerial, there's a um, a sixty foot high uh, pressure vessel that's pressurized to forty eight psi that um, feeds that feeds keeps the pressure in the um, entire waveguide system. Uh, yeah, accumulator. Yeah, it acts as an accumulator because it is a total loss pressure system. So, okay. Okay. Um, cool. Cool. Yeah. The thing yeah. about uh, military systems is uh, they don't mess around. <laughs> oh no, they don't mess around. And you have to remember this: they started designing this in 1959. It was installed because yep. that is actually the prototype one in that photograph, and it's the one I worked on. Uh, it was in. It was installed as they built the building in. 63 64 and it was finally commissioned in 68 i think it was and then um okay. that carried that carried on in service <laughs> through until 1990. okay well I, I worked on the minuteman system over here the the ballistic missiles yeah Yep, I worked on those. Um, it was Wing 3, which was in Montana. And I worked on November Flight, which was just outside of Lewistown, Montana, between Lewistown and Grass Range. And that was uh, that was my area. And my job was to make sure that when that proverbial big red button was pushed, the birds did fly. Yeah. Well, um, one, of the, one of the issues they had with one of the things we had with with 
all of the radar systems through that period was that um, the government were kind of like not that keen on spending money because they felt that um, the system wasn't really that useful because it was originally designed as a tripwire for bombers coming in that were going to um, drop nukes and we were never going to stop them all so all we needed to do was know they were coming so that we could launch our V-bombers you know the, 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 the Vulcans and Victors carrying the, the blue steel but of course then missiles came in and um, through most of the 70s yeah, th 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 the threat from the bombers kind of went away for a while but then yeah uh, um, in YouTube we have a we have a question for you uh, oh. random explorer wants to know if they were elliptical wave guides no they were rectangular well there you go random explorer <laughs> Uh, I worked uh, primarily on the uh, on the communication system between the launch control facility and the launch facility. Um, the wiring to to make sure that uh, communications were solid and would uh, withstand a nuclear strike within, I, if I remember right, uh, it, it was. A, a, a nuclear strike that was within three kilometers. The the system had to withstand that if it was going to meet specs. Yeah, I'm guessing that would be but air burst was, rather than ground burst, though. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, these were these were buried underground. Some some as deep as uh, about nine meters underground. And then, uh, of course, the launch facility itself was, you know, the the hardened silos. <clears throat> yeah, they, they've they've actually got a very good museum at um, the at Nita's Head. Well, because uh, the the, the um, The, uh, the ox room that they were using with that particular radar that's there um, went out of service in 1992 uh, and it had been the ops okay. room um, for since about six since like 66 so and it had been built on a World War Two era building because um, okay, okay. the big, the big bunker they had uh, had a had a had a fire which uh, completely gutted it. Um, Yikes! Killing two, killing two firemen because in in '66 when it happened, it was the largest underground fire that had ever happened in the UK, and it stayed the largest underground fire that had ever happened in the UK through until um, the King's Crossfire. Here, I'm going to download an image because in Lewistown, Montana, they've got, uh, in one of the parks, they've got the shell of a Minuteman. And you can actually, like, walk up and touch the thing and see how big that sucker is. And... Photo gallery. Whoop. Nope. It's not letting me. Uh, it's not recognizing I've got it yet. Dang it. Let me try something else here. There we go. What the hell? Trying to find, there it is. Oh, I'm 
back. I hear you. What are you talking about? There we go. There we go. That's uh, that's the uh, missile. Uh, that, should, that should give you folks a, a, an idea of the scale of this thing. This is in Sims Park. A pretty big bit of kit, isn't it? Really. What kind of what kind of missile is yep. that? That's a uh, Minuteman. It's uh, oh, it's a Minuteman. in Wing Three in uh in Montana. Wing One is in North Dakota. Wing Two is in Missouri. I might have those backwards, by the way. I I only worked on Wing Three in Montana. Actually, it's um it's actually smaller than I thought it would have been. Actually, I thought it was bigger than that. No, it's it's uh. It gets the job done, or it, or it did, you know, oh, yeah, it yeah, was course, designed yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you know, it's certainly not a, a Saturn V, and most people expect to see something of that scale, you know. Oh no, I never expected to see a Saturn V. I mean, that's the be being the biggest one built yet, but um, and it's uh, yeah, it's still, it lot, only still, still uh, smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, but it only has to be suborbital, doesn't it? Well, it's just got to get up there. It's got to coast and then uh, come down with uh, the multiple re-entry vehicles and then get get to their locations and then burst either in the air or on the ground, however they're programmed. And then it goes ballistic. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the final, final stage. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a ballistic, it's a ballistic trajectory, so yes, it's affected by the Coriol Coriolis effect. And uh, <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Oh yeah, don't don't but, confuse uh, them. don't confuse the flesh with that. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, you know, little kids can run up to that thing in the park and they can you know bounce tennis balls off of it when they're practicing because the tennis courts are are right behind that building you see kind of on the on the right there and yeah. that tree. Tennis courts are kind of behind there, and then baseball diamonds are off to the left. When but, was uh, uh, when was when was Minuteman taken out of service? I I want to say 94, but I'm probably wrong. I worked on it in the very, very late 80s. And what's uh, what's and, replaced uh, it now? What's 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 in there now? What have we got? I'm honestly I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I uh, I think it's I think it's just uh, like submarines and that sort of shit. So what is the no silos silos in the states anymore? Now? Uh, none that are, are, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. None that are acknowledged as being active. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah. uh, we, we know they're there and we know they are active, but they're not yeah. officially acknowledged as being active, Yeah. which, you know, government lies. Okay. I can, I can deal with that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, any 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 flatty that that wants to challenge me and say, you know, the, the government lies. Well, duh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I've every, said it all the time. Every, Everybody go, government yeah. lies, but sometimes they have to. That's I've said that in the past. There and and you know, when I was a younger man, I I was like, you know, the government should tell us the truth all the time. It should be transparent completely. Now that I'm older and a little bit wiser, I understand that sometimes it's best to not know. There, there are some, there are some times where it's best to just not know the truth. Yeah, well, I think what happens uh, with age blue is we begin to realize, you know, there's a lot of bad players out there. Yep, yep. <clears throat> And some of this stuff just is plain necessary if you want to enjoy your freedoms. I mean, sometimes you've well, got to admit, I mean, sometimes, um, you know, governments lie to us for the wrong reasons. Um, that's yeah, that's true. undeniable. Very true. I mean, you know, if you look yes. back to Watergate, I mean, that wasn't so much the government line, but that was more like politicians. But still, it's... It, um, it's a good example. I mean, it was yeah. it was politicians, which forms government, lying to us. And, and I, I understand exactly what you're saying, and I agree um there's there's good and bad out there there's there's yeah. good reasons because there's there's times where 
where you know I've told people, look, the less I know about this, what's what you're about to do or what's what's about to go on, the less I know, the better. So don't even tell me about it. I don't want to yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, I got I, I do so I absolutely certainly agree with that. It's something I've learned over the years as well. Um so yeah, certainly. Yeah, that's that's our old ops from. Yeah, I mean in our youth we tend to be uh rather uh, naive and idealistic and don't understand, you know, the nature of the bad players out there. Well, it, it tends to occur in the in the younger crowds, you know, usually the 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 twenties to or very early thirties, you know, like like me, I was I was screaming for you know total transparency in government and we need to know everything. Then I kind of wised up, you know. Yeah, yeah, likewise. As as we as we grow older, and we experience more of the world, and I'm I'm not trying to. You know, for anybody that's listening, I, I'm not trying to say that, you know, with age comes intelligence. That's that's not what I'm getting at. But with age comes experience. Wisdom. And experience experience tends to bring you more wisdom. <laughs> yeah. And and the difference between intelligence and wisdom is intelligence is knowing that tomatoes are a fruit, but wisdom is knowing they don't belong in a fruit salad. Yeah. And you begin to learn that there are some things in the world that ain't quite right, but you know what? It's probably better that way. So just keep it not quite right. <laughs> I think also as well, it's kind of like you, you um, as a youngster, you, you question absolutely everything. Um, and you don't always necessarily right th ask the right questions. I think also with that, as what comes with age, you are you you tend to get better asking the right questions. Is that if that yeah, makes sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, and that I, to me, it's the same with you know flat Earth. Is it's that I I, I say to them often, look, ask questions by all means. You know, ask away, challenge, not a problem, but ask the right questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gain oh, the information hey. and then ask the right questions that are appropriate to what you've already been told. You know. Okay, and and I want to answer a question that, or uh, at least a comment that came up in in YouTube. Grisbait, um, the the picture of that missile I showed is in Lewistown, Montana, which is in, in the center of Montana, and uh, Malmstrom Air Force Base out of Great Falls is who covers that wing of the the Minuteman system at that time. But uh, November flight ran from about Lewistown, Montana, out to Grass Range, Montana. That's that's where I was at. There was also Mike Flight, Lima Flight, Oscar, several several flights out there. So uh, yeah, they were all over Montana, and uh, it was it was quite an interesting experience. I, I will never forget it. Oops. There we go. Sorry to drone on like that, but it's it's yeah, one of those drone. It, yeah, it's one of those <laughs> one of those memories that that time in my life was was a critical juncture in my my growth as as a human. Um, I learned things on that job, and I experienced things around that time in my life that that had a significant impact on who I who I am today. So that tends to get me talking about stuff like that so i apologize if i rambled on too long ah uh, shut up rambling man so uh, what, what, shut up yourself you leave him alone. you you leave what were him alone you before you had that human growth <laughs> <laughs> un, un, unhuman I so, uh, an unhuman growth <laughs> un, unpaid growth <laughs> an unpaid growth <laughs> Grisbait has said as well in the chat as is my in-law wanted to buy a silo refurbish it to live in until we reminded him that silo was probably on the target list uh i would suggest probably that that um well at least that at least the russians probably know that it's it's probably no longer there i'm sure they probably know yeah but yeah i guess yeah if it's so. if it's up for sale they they know that it's it's deactivated and oh yeah it's about as safe as safe can be <laughs> yeah so be. yeah i mean if, if it does kick off again you're going to be pretty safe down there <laughs> 
Yeah. If so, if they want to buy a silo, I mean, I've got some, you know, minor experience with that sort of thing. Go for it. I mean, they're they're really kind of cool inside. Well, heating and cooling costs are minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. At, at, at at one point when I was working on this system, I had uh, I had two airmen standing behind me while I was you know working on this and. I, I glanced around behind me because, I mean, two people standing behind you quietly, not saying a word, not moving while you're doing your job. You're going to turn around and look at them. Both of them, were they were standing behind me, about 10 feet behind me, and about 10 to 15 feet apart. And I, I looked at one of them and I said, I looked at him and I saw he had his hand on his, his, on his sidearm. And I looked, I said, do you really have to have your hand on your gun? And he looks at me very cold and without any emotion whatsoever. He said, yes, sir. Yes, I do. Enough said. <laughs> and I turned to look at the other one. He was in the same pose. His hand was on his sidearm. And I thought, okay, all right. Don't make so, a mistake. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I finished. So I finished the job that day that I was doing. This was the first time I was I was in that situation. You know, first of several. And I asked my my boss. I said, "Why were they so? You know, why were they standing way far back and split up like that? Wouldn't it be better if they were together?" And he said, "No." He said they split up like that. And they're far away, so you can't turn around and jump them. And he said, if you do turn around with a weapon in your hand, you have to, to make a significant change in your aim if you're going to shoot either, you know, either or both of them. And that gives them time to gun you down. And I thought, okay, well, that, that, that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that very cold, yes, sir. Yes, I do. Yeah, you're not going to argue I'm with that. Gonna, yeah, I'm 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 going to remember that to my dying day. But it was it was nice to know that when it comes to nuclear weaponry, they don't fuck around. <laughs> Except when they're holding the fucking door open with a crowbar. I've seen the stories of some of the silos in the U.S. My my opinion of nuclear weapons is. Um, I don't like them. I really don't. Um, but do we really need them? Possibly. Um, so I kind of sit in the fence in terms of, sort of like that kind of argument. Probably um, as long I mean, as somebody else has them, you need them. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. But you, you could also argue is yeah. You could also argue is well. You know, nowadays, what what's? I mean, I, I was looking into this ages a long time ago, and what the biggest threat to national security in terms of the United Kingdom. And the biggest threat to national security, and not security, I think it was the biggest threat, I think, generally to the United Kingdom, was um, uh, was it environmental and economic issues. And the biggest, I, I can see. you know, and the biggest military threat as well wasn't Russia or China or anything like that, and that was terrorism. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't. I, you I can can't see. Sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we de definitely don't need, need nuclear weapons. Don't get me wrong. I'm, 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 I'm trying to find uh, more sort of ways to kind of think, well, ways of actually getting rid of them. The only way we're going to get rid of yeah. them if it was a multilateral agreement. And that's the only way. While well, there's people like Russia, China, or even Korea that have nuclear weapons and India, Pakistan, and all the rest of it, then yeah, we probably right, do. Right, right. But yeah, there the are, elephant are, in the are, room are is Iran. Yeah, they, they, they are horrendous. Yeah, I agree with that. They are horrendous weapons. Absolutely horrendous. They are. And nobody's going to nobody's going to win in nuclear war. They're just not. You know, and it, it's it, you know, life will never well, be the same. I think oh. someone if, did if, it in 1945. If North Korea decided to go nuclear on the United States, the United States would win. I'll guarantee you. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're, and they, the North Koreans know that. Well, the the leadership knows that they might have the the populace conned into believing that their glorious leader could win. Oh yeah. But uh, 
Um, Kim, that Kim, would be Kim Jong Un. As mad as he is, he knows that. He's not. He's not. Yeah, he's yeah. Not, he's not stupid. Um, Grisbait. That would be what uh, Browning. If I remember. Or, uh, gosh, I haven't been in Montana so long. Uh, Kalispell. Did you live in that area, or uh, or uh, Browning, Montana? Because Grisbait says he lived on the southern border. Of, no, if it was the southern border of Glacier National Park, that would have been uh, around the uh, the Palo area, if I remember right. Actually, something something I find funny about you, lovable Americans. Hmm. Uh, after all the nuclear testing that you did, you still thought it was safe to hide under a table when there was a nuclear blast coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no shit. It was like oh, duck and was, cover. Yeah, <laughs> duck and cover. That was just. That, I, I think that was just propaganda, really, to make people feel a bit safer. But it, it wasn't going to help anybody. That's that's. I, I agree. I agree. The book called, there's a there was a British army um, or British military training pamphlet. I forget the pam number now. But it was euphemistically known as, or it was officially known as survive and fight. Okay. <laughs> and, and it detailed what to do in the case of um, nuclear, biological, and chemical weapon attack. Yeah, what's oh, yes. that? Hide in a bathtub. Pretty much. The chemicals won't get you. <laughs> Hide the bathtub with a shower curtain over the top of you. I mean, uh, actually, yeah. actually, the chemical weapons aren't that. The chemical weapons, as long as you have a shelter with filtered air, aren't that scary. What is scary is the biological stuff and um, the um, nuclear. By the way, tip tip for the UK friends here. Tip for the UK and possibly Australian friends here. If you're ever in the United States and there's a tornado, find a bathtub, get in it. Don't fill it with water. I'm just saying, get in the tub <laughs> dry. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, that's and one. That's yeah, generally going to be one of your safer places. Alan, do you remember also the um, civilian equivalent of the um, protect and survive? Do you remember it was? Oh no, it was the civilian one was protect and survive. Do you remember the leaflets? I I never actually I I can I can remember sort of talk of them, but I don't ever remember actually seeing one. What? Well, it's only well, I, I only know of them because I've, I've seen the videos and I've I actually mum and dad actually had a copy of the leaflet which they kept for quite a long time. Um, basically, cool. one of the one of the shelters that you were uh, it was suggested that you built built. Um, and it was very rudimentary. All it was was essentially putting some board like or some doors against a wall, yes. blocking up blocking up one end with whatever you can, and likewise on top clothes. Uh, sand or dirt if you can help it if you've got it and then you just crawl in there but I mean if you if you're within you know say a one the one kiloton nuclear blast if you're within I don't know 30 40 miles it's not really going to help no, you no, kiloton. <laughs> no, yeah. one kiloton from 30 or 40 miles would not penetrate that oh okay so, okay I've got I've got my figures wrong um, it's a long time since I looked at it yeah a, a kiloton probably now one mega blow your windows in now one but, megaton you might have an issue <laughs> man maybe that's what I was thinking of it I, I did look what, at the but, figures and look at yeah. the glass radius and all that kind of stuff a long time ago but I can't remember what, what, the, what the issue is it. is the um, fallout radioactive fallout yeah, yeah exactly um, it's uh, not going to protect you from that, that without doubt yeah. but, but that is ha but that is actually generally pretty easy to deal with if you can stay inside because short term yeah yeah be, because because most of that radioactive fallout is um going to be um alpha and beta emitters not gamma emitters so um as long as you know as, as long as you don't ingest it or um uh, you know it's outside of the it's outside of the building you're in the radiation isn't actually going to reach you i would challenge anybody to stay inside that little tiny shelter any more than a few days no, no, I mean, I mean, a few days would be difficult if you're if you're if you are down 
if you are downwind of a, an explosion and you get the, um, especially if it's a ground, you know, um, especially a ground burst, air bursts tend not to give very much fallout. But uh, yeah, if you're in an area that gets covered with fallout, um, mostly you'll be fine as long as you can stay inside and keep the um, dust that's falling out of the sky outside of the building you're in. Yeah, but the thing is, um, realistically, um, in the case of a nuclear attack, there's going to be more than one that's going to be uh, near you. So you, the chances are you are going to be within range of nuclear fallout, depending on the weather conditions and wind direction. And that's and stuff. that's when you're going to watch your I, what, I-90, I think, for uh, yeah. you know, anti-rad meds. Yeah, I mean... I, I can't um, remember. I think, it, I think it's I-90, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong, though, so... No. Yeah, th th yeah. I mean, the the mil the military was certainly going to survive because we had the equipment to deal with it. But um, well, they just about have to. But uh, you, um, it's really going to impede your ability to fight a war. I'm paid. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a British film. Um, if you get a chance to watch it, I don't know if you already have. Uh, called Threads. Ah, it's iodine 131. Sorry, I was I was looking up that iodine med. It's iodine 131 on iodine 90. All right. So anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, just saying. Um, if you get a chance, there's a, a movie that was um, produced. I think it was in the 80s. I think uh, called Threads. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Have you seen it? And it demonstrated what would happen during a nuclear war. But not only that, it what it does, it highlighted um, how everything is kind of um, interlinked um, in one way or another. You know, like you know, public services, um, you know, everything is all interlinked one way, one way or another. And if you take one away, um, you know, society can quite easily collapse. Yeah, um, yep. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. Yeah. So if you've got a society where you're reliant upon... Okay, let's just say emergency services like police, ambulance, fire brigade, nuclear right, right. war. That's so that's taken away from you. Infrastructure, and they've got no no means of transport. That's taken away. No um, power, no water. No, no power, no water. Um, you know that's all linked to linked. Hospitals would be, or any kind of medical care would be um, very very difficult to get hold of. Um, and the chances are, in order for you to get food, you're going to have to work. And that's it, or you die. Or you know, or be carrying it. a badass gun. <laughs> yeah, that that's if you survive the initial attack. Um, but then of course, right, you know, right. Uh, uh, most things, most things to say, particularly with like something like the size of the United Kingdom, um, I think most areas would be pretty much irradiated. Um, towns yep. and cities would be probably uninhabitable. Um, so people well, to move uh, out of the country, you wouldn't be able to grow very much. Um, so yeah, I mean the chances are you probably in terms of population. We'll probably move back to the population of Stone Age, probably, or Bronze Age, at least, maybe. Who knows? Well, I'd, I'd have no problem going cannibal if I had to. I mean, I, I, if that's what it took to survive, man, I'd, I'd be all, all over that. I think for me, it would depend on what ashamed. age. I think it would, for me, it would depend on what age I was. Um, if if uh, I was, as long if as I was, got some form of barbecue or steak sauce, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I've got no compunction to admit that that I will do what it takes to survive, and I have no problem doing it. No, I'm a different um, mind. If if there was a nuclear if there was a nuclear war, I would have thought differently 20 years ago. If there's a nuclear war now, I'd rather go to um, the nearest target that I know of and just stand there and wait for it to happen because it'll be instant. I won't know anything about it. We're gone. That's it. Done. Finish. You know, I don't. I wouldn't really care to be honest with you. Yeah, I, c I can't be bothered yeah. fighting the zombie apocalypse. No. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm a I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. It's what I've done most of my life, and it's it's that's just right. part of who I am. That's fair enough. That was um, right. I, I would want my children to survive. Don't get me wrong. Um, if, yeah, yeah. I, if I, I had that, if I had that, if I had the opportunity, I would survive for them and to protect them. Um, but if I wasn't in that position to do that, because they could be, who knows, they could be in the, in the other part of the country. I might not have that opportunity. But if I didn't have that opportunity, then I'd rather just go somewhere where I know they're going to yeah. target and just wait for it to happen because it will be instant. I won't know anything about it. Just be no. gone, that's it, finished. <laughs> Re regarding regarding uh, nuclear conflict, an interesting thing about the central United States from, you know, Texas 
up through into the Dakotas, um, there were pretty much every family had a shelter. And it wasn't, it wasn't because of bombs, it was because of tornadoes. And they were built yeah. in such a manner that they would survive indirect, you know, again, you know, like, you know, at five kilometers, yeah. some pretty big strikes. Yeah. <laughs> Rex, um, Rex in, in comments, he says, unpaid shills has probably already experimented with cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have to say, no, I have not, but I have, uh, I have done some survival camping and things like that. And I have, I have been able to eat some things that most people would, would die before they ate it. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've found carrion, you know, a kill from, from either a, a wolf or, or a bear. And, you know, I just cut away the bad meat and took the meat that was good and you know i have no problem eating that i've eaten insects uh you know whatever it took so i don't think cannibalism would be much much of a, a stretch for me <laughs> i don't know i i, if, I think if he, if he was in that situation if i had to survive then yeah i probably would as well i would i might, i'd resort to that if i had to It'd be, it'd be would be an absolute last resort. I wouldn't want to do it if I didn't. Know. Yep, and and same for me. It wouldn't be something I'd turn to first thing. You know, it's like, hmm, let's see, I've got I've got this this can of spam here or Phil. Well, Phil, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> no, it, it it would be it would have to be an absolute last resort. I think I think but, I'd think uh, twice. I think I'd think it think twice if it was Davros that I had to eat. I'd be like, nah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I have in I have in the past tried witchy grub. Oh, have you? Yeah, and um, oh. and mealworms. And they popped when you when you bit into them. <laughs> I'm not sure about the witchy grubs uh, grubs, but the um, what was that other thing you said, Alan? Sorry, the, mealworms. Um, yeah, well, I'll be I would because they're, they're a lot smaller. <laughs> witchy yeah, grub, uh, so, really not sure about that. Especially if so you're your fellow them. man. Would your fellow man's probably going to look like to you like uh, Kramer did in that Seinfeld episode to uh, Newman when he fell asleep in the hot tub. I <laughs> yeah. never watched that show, so I, I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, New Newman envisioned uh, Kramer as like a uh, uh, braised chicken wing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I, I would say that's probably would be accurate under those circumstances. I mean, I, I'm just a believer that your microphone is really low. What was that? I said, was that when he rubbed butter all over himself? And, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that speaking then? Who was that? Yeah, speaking? whoever you are, your, your microphone is horrible. I'm in the car uh, it, uh, on the Bluetooth. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we can we can barely make you out, or at least I can barely make you out. Yeah, it's very quiet. I think it's Sean oh. Sean Smith. Oh hush, woman, we're talking. Men are talking. Get out of here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. This is well I like. I'm yeah. And then, and then some. I'm just waiting in the moon yeah. to rise a bit more. I'm going to take some photos in a minute. That's why I'm hanging about. I think you ought to change your name in the thing, though. Panel whore. It's just, nah, I can't. No. I, okay. I couldn't call you that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a gentleman. Pip, 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 pip. Pip, yeah, that's right. Pip, pip, pip. That's better. I will change it. Pip, pip, cheerio. I'll pip my real name. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to put Tom Tom in timeout, but I couldn't delete the message without doing it. Couldn't figure out how to delete the message without putting him in timeout. Eh. Some people got no class. And some people got no balls. And Tom Tom is a conjunction of those two. Me? <laughs> no, I said Tom Tom is a conjunction of those two. All right. I just thought no balls. That's me. No, 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 Pip. It well, was, uh... nobody would expect you to have a set. 
I mean, I, I would be shocked and surprised if you had a sack. <laughs> Guts, maybe guts. I think is the is the is the word. That you're 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 carrying your analog much higher in the abdomen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Relatively what higher. What was multi Tom Tom doing then? Oh, what was he, the, oh um, just he chose to use, and um, the particular word in that greeting that I was not having being used on my channel. Oh yes, no, exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't allow that to. I don't see him. I've gotten blocked. I've had him blocked for months. Yeah. Yeah, Tom. Tom's a spineless, gutless turd. Um, that's you know, if he if he wants to, you know, come in and debate me, fine. You know, whatever. But he's had his chance twice. He's he's run away crying. You know, twice. So, you yeah, know, well, unless he wants to grow a pair and a spine to hang him from. I got nothing, nothing for him. I don't even want to deal with him. Well, it's the same here because he he's constantly refused to speak to me as well for the last for for a year and ducked, ducked and dived and dodged and weaved. Yep. And Comment uh, commando. Uh you mean he's like one of those unwanted sex toys that you find in a dumpster? Yeah. <laughs> and then use twice and then throw away yourself. <laughs> No, nah, multi Tom Tom's just another one of those lovable trolls. You love to hate them. Uh, no, I don't love to hate anybody. I just either they annoy me and I'm I just kind of dismiss them with a hand wave, or or else you know they're all right and I can deal with them. You know, one of the two. It's but, easy uh, online. Yeah, it's, it's easy online to actually deal deal with trolls. Anyway, we just block them. That's as simple as that. It's really easy. I do it a lot because the reason why is because I can. I oh, know, but suppose chemo still exists. Yeah, well, it still exists, but I don't have to be on the same platform as him, or I can just block him, um, like like I did earlier. Yeah, yeah, block. I just was. I just wasn't going to go on the. I was just wasn't going to share a platform with him. It's as simple as that. I mean, he can yeah, deny. He, he can die. He can deny all that crap. All he likes. I don't give a shit. I know. It I've been him. told by several people that, it was that when it when it happened and when it was all exposed, he didn't deny it then, and now he's denying it. So I'm calling him bullshit. So yeah, I don't bullshit. care. I don't. I don't care whether it happened one year ago, four years ago, or ten years ago. I am not going to share a platform with somebody with those views. Not happening. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah views. It's not a um, Discord post either. It's a YouTube post. I yeah, it didn't, yeah, that's what I was thinking because when I was showing because it actually, because it, it didn't look like the, same, the right text or the right size it was or the YouTube right font or anything. It's a YouTube it a comment. comment section because it predates Discord. Yeah, well there you go then. That's that. You see, he's lying straight away. And it, I'll let you just know as well when you... <laughs> yes, Chris. Exactly. Very much so, Chris. Really control six three. Yeah. But do you know? Do you know early on when he when he looked straight away, he actually blow. Oh, he blamed. He see. He blamed the. Oh, it's the globe tards. They're just trying to create, kind of shut down. The, um, you know, the flat Earth debate. That's all they're doing, and all the rest of it. Absolute crap. Absolute crap. Oh, um, and Chris, that's regifted without washing. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the problem is casual that he has the Spurs has a very very long history with Jared. Yeah, uh, well, that's that's, that's because, yeah, I know, he's, yeah, I know Jared is, but uh, yeah, that's could, by the by, really. Because and Chris, by the way, I've got to give props to Chris because that's probably one of the funnier comments I've seen in a while. Yeah. So definitely props to you, Chris. That's that was a good one. Spurs irritates me because he refuses he refuses to listen. All, all he wants to do is soapbox. Um, flat Earth data is the same way. At least plain truth is willing to shut his gob and listen. Um, you know, flat Earth data needs to like actually get some data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Data both, from this both, century would be nice. <coughs> both of them argue semantics anyway. They've got no, nothing but semantic arguments all the time. Like nothing mm. else. Yeah. 
which is why I consistently ask for empirical and exclusively indicative evidence of a flat Earth. I just ask him for a number. Yeah, well, when you are thirty-three, when you ask for him for that evidence as well, it's just this just the shift the shift the burden of proof every single time. It's kind of like you're making the claims. No, no, you're making the claims. And then you just get into the semantic argument. It just goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it gets absolutely yeah. nowhere. You end, up, you end up chasing your tail for two hours, and yeah. it ain't worth it. You get nowhere. It's a great you, you show, don't though. About anything. Yeah. Makes a great no, show. No. Actually, it's, <laughs> I don't think it is. Because uh, it goes nowhere. Yeah, but hey, hey, it's like watching a train wreck. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, train wrecks are at least a little bit linear, and something's moving. Something's yeah. moving forward. It's yeah. a dumpster <laughs> fire. That's what it is. It's a dumpster fire. And <laughs> they're fine for a while. You can stoke them up and get nice and warm. But eventually they start to burn out. And um, you just yeah. get a horrible, smelly smoke. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes dumpster fires can be quite funny because I don't know if you remember, um, what was that guy um, that came on with Fight the Flat Earth ever since? And all he did was basically just scream and shout at everybody and told them how rubbish they were and they weren't bringing anything and all the rest of it. Now, what was his own name? Uh, yeah, knows. basically. Oh, I can't remember his name, but it wasn't so long ago as well. But yeah, basically he just stood, he just went onto the you know, to the debate and he just sat there and just screamed at people, shouted at them, screamed and shouted, constantly interrupted them all the time. Never had any, never gave anybody a chance to actually talk at all. And it literally was shouting and insulting them and all the rest of it. And that's all it was. Um, and that's, I'm going to guess Craig. Fight. Yeah, that was against, that was against, uh, well, actually, no, Craig set up the debate with, I think it's Schrodinger's cat. That's right. It was Schrodinger's cat it was against. Um, if you ask him, he'll probably tell you who it was. Um, yeah, and and all he did, he spent the whole time. He never gets Schrodinger's cat, cat a chance to actually talk. And numerous times he was told to be quiet while Schrodinger's cat actually um, said something, but he just wouldn't. He just would not shut up. And he just screamed and shouted and screamed and shouted and screamed and shouted. And then he was given five minutes to wrap up, but Schrodinger's cat, just for a laugh, gave him his five minutes to wrap up at the end because he just hanged himself. He just... <laughs> He just spent 10 minutes just shouting and ranting and screaming and, and shouting and all the rest of it. And he was, just, oh, honestly, that now that is a dumpster fire. That was actually quite funny, to be honest with you, because he, yeah, you know, he had absolutely nothing. That's a dumpster fire. Was that, was it, was that multi Tom Tom? No, no, it wasn't multi Tom Tom. No, definitely wasn't him. No. Was it 33? No, it wasn't 33 either. No. I know who that is. Russian vid? No, it wasn't, no, definitely not Russian vid. Uh. Lemonberg at least shut his mouth occasionally. He was quite he was quite new to the scene as well, if I remember rightly. No, Lemon Lemonbird is polite enough to shut his face and, and let someone else talk occasionally. This guy literally, I mean, like even even you know, during the opening statement, I think they both had 10 minutes. Um, this guy went first, and then Schroeder had tried to do it, but the guy just wouldn't shut up during during that 10 minutes. You know, you when you're supposed to say quiet where well, you give your initial presentation. He just would not shut up. And it just got to the point but where see, it was just so funny. It was hilarious. But see, there's a difference between a dumpster fire and a Bangladeshi landfill inferno. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that probably might have been it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bangladeshi landfill inferno. You don't want to be anywhere near that son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, there's there, first off, there's shit burning in there. You don't want to know what it is to begin with. And then after it catches fire, you definitely don't want to be messing around with it. Yeah. yeah but, somebody, but, some, but, but somebody like yeah, Spurs as well. I mean, but a, a debate with Spurs, you know, that's not even entertaining. It's pointless and boring. Because it's just some just some yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's boring and um, <laughs> yeah, Spurs yeah. is another one that's been devolving over the months. It just gets worse and worse. Yeah, um, I, I think another one that would be problematic would be QE because he's just so he's he's like a perfect storm of ignorance and hubris. Yeah, well, there's the three: uh, Riley, QE, and uh, Chemo. They've all been deteriorating progressively over the months. QE saying, in that... particular. I mean, QE is now to the point where he's just become a raving madman. <laughs> I, I don't saying, give him the was, time of day. 
Was that you saying that, George? Yes. Yeah, so I wasn't sure he was talking. Then. Hey, George, I got to ask you. I have to ask you. How the hell do you say your last name? Um, most people pronounce it Nachik. The H is silent. Nachik? Yeah. Uh, okay. Ukrainian pronunciation is Nachuk, but uh, most people say Nadiak or Nachik. Okay. All right. And where, where does, he, where well, does, now, you, where does your name come from? Where does where, where it originate? Ukraine, Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Okay. Yeah, he, he said Ukrainian just a moment ago, so I thought maybe oh. you would have picked up on that shit. No, I, I missed that shit. <laughs> uh, his political bias came in then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck off. You racist, just kind of you racist tired. bastard. <laughs> yeah, being of Ukrainian Casual. descent, I'm just kind of getting tired of Trump calling me every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing a booty call, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I was thinking, <coughs> grammatic, grammatically speaking, is it a butt dial and a booty call the same thing? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, think about it. You know, a butt dial and a booty call. Grammatically, they're the same. True. Boy, you're saying that Trump's butt dialing. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Or is, you know, it's a booty call, one of the two. Yeah. Um, if that's the way you want to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to get some dirt on Joe Biden for me, but uh, on your way through. Maybe butt dialing for a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Anyway, gentlemen, I'll catch you later. Been enjoyable listening to you. <laughs> catch you later. Have your secretary George. get a hold of my George. secretary. I'll watch. <laughs> yeah. Have your people call my people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Have your yeah, facts let's, call let's, my facts. They'll do lunch. Yeah. Let's do yeah. lunch. Yeah. I was going right. to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Not George. Later. Bye, George. <laughs> <laughs> Davros, why are you so, so obsessed with my past political affiliations? What is it with that politics? Oh, because uh, after you said it, I said I'm going to hound you for it for the rest of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm sure I could live with that. Oh no, it's also the fact that it gets a rise out of you, and it, it sort of it breaks that uh, bubble. <laughs> I don't. Know. Uh, I'm, I'm taking it all in jest, and I'm just I'm just responding in jest. It's all so it's all good. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I take I've had, it. I've had, I've had it. Is that I've had it? I've had it. I've had far worse than that. Yeah, no, but I go. Oh, here comes the politics again. You go. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for Tom Tom to grow up here and join us. I'm actually but something. I'm any. If you some of the nasty debates you see on, um, you know, flat earth debates and stuff like that, I mean, I've actually come away from some debates where um, later on down the line, I've had death threats. Oh, if, joyous. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of, um, in, in the UK, the um, EDL, the English Defence League. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had, a, I had a debate with some of those about some certain um, issues. I won't go into it, um, but they really just took a very bad disliking to me, and I was getting messages. They're going to, you know, um, burn my house down with me and my family in it, and uh, well, better, yeah. watch my, better watch my back, and all that kind of thing. I'd, I'd probably had about, I don't know, somewhere 15, 20 threats like that. Nice. Oh, they're nice people, then, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't take it seriously. I was half tempted to call the police, and I thought, what's the point? So I just I'd have called call the police just to get their asses in jail, just to teach them a freaking lesson. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just, not able to happen, unfortunately. I mean, the chance, because I mean, the thing is, I was living in Northern Ireland, and I know they're all in England. I mean, they would have to be able to find me to begin with. And I'd, half yeah, them, I don't yeah. think could, I don't, half of them probably couldn't even follow, uh, afford to travel over here anyways. So, so whatever. <laughs> so I, well, I had some color. Years years ago, I had some fella threaten me. He said he was going to find me and slit my throat in the middle of the night while I was asleep. Oh. And I thought, well, fuck this noise. So went ahead and called up a couple buddies and went over to his place. And I knocked on the door and he comes rushing out and sticking a 38 up in my face. And that's when he realized that standing on either side of the door leveled off on him was two of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of them had a had a 45 tucked up behind his ear the, the other one had, 
had himself a 38 stuck in the guy's rib cage. And I'm standing there just smiling at him. So he had my buddies to the right and left, and he's and he's got me in front of him. And he just froze and, and I just told him, okay, why don't you why don't you hand me a piece and let's talk. So we started talking. Well, then his mother comes out and sees my friends holding holding on him. And she starts flipping out. And I said, Well, you need to tell your boy not to, you know, threaten people because he done fucked with the wrong person. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we we had no intent to you know really hurt him. We just wanted to teach him a damn lesson that you know you you can't just be you know throwing shit around like that. Yeah. So we did go out there. They did level off on him. But uh, in in our defense, I will say all weapons were not loaded. So yeah, it was basically a game of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Cluck, cluck, cluck. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Yeah. What? He uh, he decided uh, he wanted to go ahead and give it up and hand over his his pistol to me. So we had a little chat, you know, and uh, got things squared away. And never, I never heard from him again, which is exactly what I wanted. Just go away. He was just some some little eighteen year old punk that uh, thought he knew more about the world than he really did. Damn those punks and their business. Well, you know there there are people with which one should not fuck, and that night he met one. Yeah. And there are people that I don't fuck with because they're way more badass than me. You know, it's it's a it's a food chain. You know, and he, he was not an apex predator. He, he, he wasn't up there. <laughs> he was an appetizer. <laughs> At best, he was, he was the Ramaki. <laughs> right, I'm going to head off and go and chill out and relax and do some chill things. And uh, I will, and I'm sure I'll catch up with you tomorrow, maybe, or next day, whatever. Some chill things. <laughs> some chill, chill things. Things just oh, chill I think it's oh, chill. Yeah. chill. Well, I'll probably dude, do some chill stuff as well. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll dude, see. that's that's my area. You don't go fucking around with my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't heard I'm on the uh, you haven't heard I'm on the NASA payroll yet. Then obviously, oh shit. I haven't had my I haven't Another had my check. One. I haven't had my check from Bridenstine. He said he was going to br- drop it around personally. Bastard, he hasn't brought it yet. <laughs> I thought it was just a Freudian slip. No, I'm wearing my Freudian slip right now. It's pink. <laughs> it, it's pink and feels so comfy next to my skin. Oh, God. And that, no, I'm definitely going then. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> before, before, I, before I start getting images in my head that I'm not going to be able to get rid of. <laughs> that, that taste of bile in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. All the best, gents. Boom. Take care and uh, be good. Bye bye, Casual Space Bar. Take it easy. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that puts a whole new meaning to showtime right indeed oh come on some flatty come on in here we need a flatty in here no yeah we're not gonna get one i didn't have a, ch- I didn't have a chance to chat with a flatty earlier so i'm i'm, I'm wanting i'm wanting one i don't think we um I don't think there's any left in the chat apart from Tom Tom. Well, yeah, we, Tom, Tom we know Tom he Max won't come. I don't think Tom Tom's been back since um, he got time. Called him out. <laughs> yeah, typical for him, I guess. Oh well. There's course, always tomorrow, I guess. Uh, and of course, Tom Tom also has the other problem. He's no longer blue. Wah, Ricky, I want to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, hurry up before I answer Riley's personal ad, according to RT96. <laughs> Hey, RT, I said earlier, if there's a midget involved, I'll think about it. Well, Riley's, Riley's missus looked pretty short. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as she's not hideous, eh, I'll, I'd consider it. But Riley would have to take a, take a hike and we'd have to bring a midget in there. <laughs> you know, or, or a gal with epilepsy. That's, that's another good one. It's like a, a song, Shaken Baby. I want a fucking epileptic girl. The visions I see are of us on her bed. She's having a fit while she's giving me head. Now you can tell that I got the fever because I can't get it up unless she's having a seizure. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what band was that? It's called Shaken Baby. That's And it's just a song about doinking an epileptic girl. It sounds like something the Fugs would have written. <laughs> now, this was... Uh, this is a little band that never quite made it. A buddy of mine was in it. And, you know, that's the way these things go. <laughs> he flew the coop. Oh, well. Hey, guys, go out and find me a flatty. Grizz, RT, go out and find me a flatty. How long is the delay on this feed? A um, couple of minutes. Quite a long time. Holy crap, a moly. Because as somebody no pointed out to me, slowly. As somebody pointed out to me, I want to, I I really need to be leaving a decent length of um, bail out time that I can stop oh, the, yeah, yeah. Um, that I can stop the feed. Without it going in case somebody on, bombs you. in case somebody bombs me. Yeah, that sucks, man. So, People do shit like that. So I've got a, a I've got a, I've got a thirty second delay on OBS plus all the stuff that nice. YouTube puts on. Yeah, that'll work. Oh. I mean, if you're going to do it, make it tasteful porn or something like that. Yeah, something with midgets in it. <sighs> yeah, I had a uh, medical, medical appointment earlier that uh, went well for them, not so good for me. Because every time they come out, it freaking hurts. <laughs> But I got enough booze in me now, so that uh, looks like I'm going to be able to relax a little bit. It killed off enough of that pain, Did at least for now. Prosecco? Did you enjoy the Prosecco? Oh, it was nice. I pulled that up with a little fat rum and coke. Uh, now, there wasn't enough alcohol in that Prosecco to do the job. That was not going to happen. There we go. All right. Ah. Damn, now I can feel, relax. Feel better now? Oh, yeah, big time. I'm laying in bed. I got one of them beds where you can put the feet up. That's That's nice. Oh, You're talking to a guy who's had his feet up for a week times five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, in my case, it's been a few years. And I'll be is glad it, when they're fully healed so I can get back to reality again. Is it, just, is it an ordinary bed where you can just raise the feet or is it a hospital type bed? It's, it's, it, is a, it is a hospital bed, flat out. Okay, I feel sorry for you because I have to sleep in one of them too and they're fucking horrible every yep. day. Well, this one's not too bad. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I've got to uh, do a little electrical work on it. Uh, the pendant 
where you control it, you know, the feet and the head and all that shit. Yeah. Some of the wires are broken, and so I've got some splicing materials here. I've just got to cut it open and do the splicing and rewrap it. Uh, I'm, but, I, uh, I guess I'm really lucky because um, the, uh, well, actually, social services um, supply the bed um, as part of our um, socialised care that we get in the UK. Um, yeah, so, that's, that's a plus. So it gets, so it gets so it gets looked after. You know, they yeah, they come and yeah. test it once a year, and if there's a problem with it, they'll come and fix it. Well, between my pension and the tribe, I don't have to worry about any medical costs. Um, I'm completely covered for everything: um, medical, dental, optical, the whole works. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm uh, I'm not hurting as far as like medical stuff, so that's that's definitely a big plus. Yeah, because that can I, uh, be an issue in the US, can't it? Yes, yes, and luckily and thankfully, there is a, a BIA clinic or a BIA registered clinic up here, which is the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Right. And this clinic, this clinic is about 15 to 20 blocks away from me. So maybe a kilometer, you know, between a kilometer and a mile away. And they have yeah. full services. They have medical, they have dental, and they have psychological services. The only thing they don't have is optical. And oh, to pay my bill, to pay my bill, I just sign my name and uh, write my tribal name, Chickasaw, after that. So that's that's real nice. <laughs> yeah. And even even when I was homeless, you know, when I was living on the streets and going into this clinic, they still treated me with with respect, with dignity, and it was a, just it was nice to be able to go in there and know that I'm going to be treated like a human. That that felt really good. So I was I was was and am quite pleased with uh with those services they that they uh offer there well, that's, um, uh, even if i damn good. what was that i said it's pretty damn good sorry i can't speak yeah. very loudly now because um as I said nathan has to get up early for work in the morning and um, they've gone to yep, bed yep, yep. And, it, it's, it's, and, it, and it is nearly 20 yep. past 10 anyway yeah <laughs> yeah I've got a friend in Germany. I need to get a hold of her here pretty soon and say good night. She, she's this little gal. She's a real sweetheart. Um, she, uh, of course, being German, English is not her first language. So I'm helping her refine her English, and <laughs> she she has been calling me. Uh, she has she has a name for me that. Uh, that several people use it. Um, we play the same game online, and she uses my my game name, but she calls calls me my game name. And so I explained to her. I said, you know, in in America, when when you say, you know, this is my, you know, whatever you're talking about a gal or a guy, that that implies some sort of intimacy or relationship and i said I, and i understand you don't mean it but uh you know i just wanted to let you know and she's like well you know i don't mean it in that way so i'll still use it and it's like all right you know it still makes me smile yeah i am um, you know she's go ahead and say so one, one of the carers that i used to get um before she left the company uh was portuguese and she was we had a re yeah, we had a really good working relationship, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes her idiomatic English was a bit <laughs> off. Yep. And, 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 and sometimes, of course, she would use um, words that you wouldn't normally use. Right. But, right. So, so for example, because I'm 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 six I'm six foot tall. And right. But I'm also not exactly a lightweight either. 
And one one day we were talking, and she she called me big. And of course, I started falling around laughing, and she was like, "What have I said?" And I said, "Well, um, you know, usually, at least in British English, if you call somebody big, you are not implying because you." Yeah, you because know, she uh, says you're not implying that they're tall. You're implying that they're <laughs> large in the other direction. Yeah, in the in the other direction. It was like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, 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 say I got on really well with it. It was just one of those things where um, you, yeah, you know, because because it's English, you know, English is a second language and, you know, and her English was right, right. absolutely brilliant. It's just every now and again, she would say not the word you would normally pick, not necessarily an incorrect word, you know, not necessarily an incorrect word, but not in the, not in the, not in the correct context. Okay. Okay. I see this gal I was referring to. She's half German, half Mexican. So, so her her mother's Mexican, her father is German, and her mother migrated to Germany to be with her father. And uh, so she's got this this beautiful coffee and cream complexion, just flawless. I mean, just beautiful. And she's got those those black Mexican eyes. But she's got other German structures in her face that she's she's a real looker. And if I was a younger man, boy, I'd be I'd be chasing her around the tables. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm a geezer. She's a young and that ain't gonna happen. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> ah. But as long as she wants to call me my whatever, that's that's fine. I'll let her. I ain't gonna argue with that. So, so be it. I uh, I also work with Russians uh, pretty much on a daily basis, and uh, I help them improve their English. You know, because they'll uh, they'll say, okay, you know, this is so. No, this is hard. Hard to know. Yes, in Russia, you not drink vodka. Vodka drink you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he sent me a couple of, couple of shot glasses in the mail. And uh, a bottle of vodka. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, I've definitely been, uh, been hitting the bottle with those. Pretty nice. <laughs> now what, what do we got there? Oh. <sighs> I would have to say Unfortunately, right. Because, yeah, if this is a freight elevator, that's the way it's got to be. Next. <coughs> Everyone else is going to sleep. Yeah, well, no, I'm trying to upload some photos. I just took them in and just waiting. Oh, I'm trying to mm. get into my iPad. And I'm uh, I'm getting ready to jet because. I've, I've got to do something about this leg. It's, uh, it's starting to really get to me. Um, and, like, and I think um, I've answered enough questions. Well, are you sure about that? 
<laughs> yeah, that was a that was a leading question. Now you have to counter. Mostly. No, I <laughs> That takes brain power right now. I ain't got any. Hey, that sounds like a personal problem. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I, that is that is the best argument when when someone uses a non-contextual argument of well oh, this hurts because of something something what does that have to do with my conversation that sounds like you've got a personal problem but mr shells go and look after yourself what's what i said go and look after yourself me but, no okay don't look after yourself but look after <laughs> your leg <laughs> I definitely intend to. I've uh, pretty well got enough booze in me that it should start kicking in here real soon. I'm hoping it does because this sucks. So I'm on Reddit right now, and uh, uh oh, you know, uh oh, and I'm I'm looking up I'm looking up all the flat Earth stuff on here. I wonder how long it would take for me to get kicked off of probably three or four of these sites. Just by answering a couple, or not even answering, just asking a couple questions. You know, on Reddit. Oh yeah, probably not lightly. Yeah, well, okay. So, so one of one of the one is one of the things is uh, uh, this guy that's asking asking questions. So, what happens when we reach the edge of the world? Do we fall off? Is there some kind of barrier? I'm genuinely interested. So they send him all these pictures showing this huge ice wall around it, around uh, all the all the different continents, and you know, and one of the one of the questions someone asked is, wouldn't it be possible to go over the wall? Then we have aircrafts to carry us over said wall. Yep. <laughs> so the other one I would ask is, if if the uh, if there's an ice wall out there. How does the sun continue? How does the sun go around to the different, um, to the different, different pieces of land at different times? You know, oh, just a couple of questions. What the hell was that? And they had it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's me moon. Oh, there's what? Nice. There's her moon. My it's wrong way around. Oh. It's upside down. Hang on, let me uh, fire up my screen again because it was in. I need to figure out how you want the tripod. Oops. And I'm just seeing your logos. So let's see. Look again. Look again, it's back up. No, it's not. It, it was. Mine. Pip, what yeah. are you doing? Can I take pictures of, pictures of the moon? Is it the moon or your ass? <laughs> <laughs> it's my ass. Either I'm way. In trouble. <laughs> either way. Either way, it's a moon. <laughs> my ass, I'm in trouble. Look, it's pretty. It's got dumples. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out how to use a tripod. The camera just keeps falling. I'm going to try oh, and point oh, it up oh. <laughs> Tighten the screws. I did. They're as tight as possible. Oh, more. Um, tighter? Can't get them any tighter. I'll break it. I've heard I that before. <laughs> I got stars in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're painted. I should use the flash for that one. Oh, I love that.
Mm. All right. That sounds like a midget dying. No, I think I think I'm reaching a state of pain disequilibrium. Is a nautical equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, with with a nautical pterosaurus uh, uh. backlighting the the uh, King Benedict. For frighten the flat. I see, I see. Good night, shoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's that bad. It's that bad now, huh? Like yeah. You sounded like you're about to fall asleep. Yeah, I am actually. So, so the booze is kicking in. Let's just say um, one might. One might need to make a note of the um, timestamp to come back to find that for the soundboard. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the booze is kicking in, the pain levels are dropping, and I'm finally getting to the point where I can crash. It's been about a day and a half since I had any real sleep, so that doesn't surprise me a bit. So I will bid you all adieu. Uh, I yeah. look forward to the next panel where I can actually contribute something. Adieu. Do and you and you and uh this is pre-paid prepaid unpaid bulge signing out sayonara <laughs> mofos <laughs> nice show. Yeah, catch y'all later. Yeah. later good night and there was six yeah Oh, uh, I might as well say now while there's, while there's still a few people around I doubt if I'll be doing a show tomorrow night because I shan't be home until nearly half past five because uh, I should be going home. <laughs> but uh, I, I won't get, since, since I'm using public transport for both the journey to Norwich and the journey home again and, It'll um, be a while. Yeah, well, the I I leave it. I, I leave I leave both up at two o'clock. I I get off. I get home about half past five. Um, this is a journey that takes about half an hour in the car. But at least an hour by bus, yeah. No, it takes from two till half past five. Oh, really? So to go somewhere that's only like 15 minutes down the road? Well, half an hour. Yeah. Oh, 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 takes road. you oh, three and oh, a half. On oh, oh, <laughs> roads oh, road where the yeah. speed limit is either 60 or 70 miles an hour for most of it. Yeah. But yeah, um, it takes three hours, or three and a half hours. Um, oh well, it's um, as long as you get get what you need done. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind going. I leave here at like quarter to eight in the morning, and I get there about hopefully get there at ten past about ten past ten. Um, mm. It's. Going is going is generally a little easier because the bus I have to worry about catching is the first bus that I get on. So if there's a problem with it, I can just come home and not go out. Ah. Whereas, um, like, as for example, there is already somebody in a wheelchair on the bus. They can't take another one, can they? Nope. Um, push chairs can be a little bit difficult sometimes because on some buses um, people with push chairs decide that they're quite happy in the wheelchair space, wheelchair space and no I'm not going to fold my push chair up and get out of the way for a person in a wheelchair which is what the um, Yeah, I can't drive because 
I'm not allowed to and I don't have a car that I can get my chair in and uh, I can't really afford a taxi no that would be that would be a silly thing to do because the problem is the taxi drive the taxi drive it's it's about 30 miles that I've got to go oh bye bye Pip bye Pip yeah, it's, it's about a 30 mile trip, so um, it's not on in a taxi. And if I take my power chair, um, it's about it's about 100 quid each way. Mm-hmm. Because um, because it's a specialist vehicle, they can basically charge what the fuck they like. Which is freaking ridiculous, but. What can you do? Uh, not a lot, because, um, you know, sometimes if I'm in my manual chair, I think to myself, hmm, should I just get a taxi? But sometimes they'll turn up to pick you up in a taxi and I go, oh, you, you're in a wheelchair, you should have ordered the eights, you should have ordered the people carrier. Because, um, again, uh-huh. people carrier, specialist vehicle, and uh, they can charge what they like for it. Mm. As against... Um, but, of course, my manual wheelchair folds up and will go in the boot of a saloon car. Yeah. So there's, there's actually no excuse for them not taking me. No. But, uh, they, uh, they, they don't like it. You know, Pip. Um, yeah, um, people people with vision problems get even worse with some with some taxi drivers in some areas of the country because by law a taxi driver has to take a guide dog in the cab, in the taxi. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they and guide dogs are trained to sit in the front foot well of a car. Yeah. So that they can, but there's a um, there are large communities in the UK where dogs are um, not acceptable, and the taxi drivers won't take them in the taxis. It's it, it's one of the few ways that there are some problems with some sections of the community because yeah I've seen video clips of taxi drivers refusing to take blind people they'll turn up see the dog and um, just tell them no and drive off fucking discrimination yeah that's that's blatantly what it is it's discrimination because of a disability Mm-hmm. And uh, their religious views are trumped by the disability. <laughs> anyway, any... on that note, I I've think had probably... enough. Yes, I think it's probably time to go to bed. In fact, how about we do um, three more minutes of blabbering on? And then we can say goodnight to the people and we'll have done five hours. <laughs> All right, we can do that. <laughs> I, I see no point in stopping the stream at four hours, 57 and a half minutes. No, we can, we can, we can dribble something out. Um... <laughs> especially, not when we've got 20, especially not when we've still got 22 people watching. Yeah, why well, they're watching, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But it's been fun. Yeah, oh, it has. Well, it's been a bit of a long one, hasn't it? Since yeah, it has. Since we started with Terry Street and it's pretty much gone non-stop. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's been one of them. Di- been one of them days, hasn't it? I should be. I should be glad to. Um, I should be glad to. I should be glad that I'm only having to go out tomorrow.
I have to say, I had got lazy, but I, I, I was, I, I, until very recently, I was getting a lift on a Thursday. Yeah. Because one of the other guys who goes could come around and pick me up. But um, he had a falling out with a couple of other people there. So he told them to, to basically, it? yeah. Yeah, it happens. There's not much you can do about it. No, well, it was. Um, oh, the other two were being a complete, were being complete and utter. Um, I'm trying to think what the word might be. Idiots. Troglodytes. Um, yeah, causing causing trouble, making snipey comments, um, talking behind people's talking behind people's backs, and uh, he'd had enough of it. So, which is a shame because he was the one that makes all the bacon rolls for us and cooked them. Bacon oh, bacon I love cakes. bacon rolls. Um, and and being a and being an ex um, army slop jockey, his um, uh, blah, 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 um, his personal speciality was uh, cakes and pastries. Mm. So he actually enjoys baking cakes and stuff. So we just get cakes. Nothing in. like a morning breakfast of a bacon roll and then a cake afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes even cake before the bacon roll, depending on how long. I have to wait for the bacon roll to get cooked. Oh dear. And how desperate one is for breakfast. And what the cake is. So did we crack the five hours? We've cracked the five hours. Oh, so, there you uh, go. Yeah. Oh, there uh, you go. <laughs> good night from me, and it's good night from him. Good yes. night. Good night. Good night to everybody in YouTube land. Yes, Alan. Good night. <laughs> All right, Alan. I'll speak to you later. I know. Okay. Have fun. Yeah.